like she was trying to do with her wife. I don't know where this sex has been, where, where this one came from. It was not on the movies we were watching. There is no porn for the single white ho- holes in college and then this is how you bang the wife porn. Nah. Yeah, but some, everyone just feels like maybe you just start going slower and you start like... Slower to what? Why do you slow? Are you why are you slowing? <laughs> I, I, but I, don't, I don't know. Down? I don't know. I, but I mean, like I've had so many conversations with guys. I think we've had that conversation as well. Yeah. On previous podcasts, where it's like, wh- wh- who gave you the concept that once right. you get a wife, that's when you start doing all Church. your most boring sex. Church. But when you're when the you're said, when you you hold out, hold out. <laughs> Brett, you know, you know what it is. It's because I don't. I don't think it's. I think it's down to um, historics and parenting and. If you look at like Onyibos, they're very more liberal with sex. Yeah, do you see what I'm saying? It's in their movies, in their songs, in the, in in, the, in it's explained, uh, I guess, in a more friendly and uh, open manner as opposed to dictator and small country type vibe. You feel me? Yeah. So what I'm saying is, um, so you feel they just have got more time to explore, or more chance. Well, they're more, they're more expressive with their their their, their selves. Yeah. I, I don't know any Nigerians who can say I saw my mum and dad even holding hands or expressive or when you watch a Nigerian movie as soon as the sex scene comes and you're like yo 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 Relax. because nobody has ever <laughs> seen Africans doing this and so it looks like it's, it, it looks forced and cringed right so we can yeah. watch Tyrese and or Mel Gibson toss a woman off the balcony and throw her into the closet and say sex 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 and you're like oh this is so passionate wait which sex is he <laughs> by the way the movie balcony. sex is not real marriage life sex that shit is just lights camera action bro, bro, saying, I'm married, sorry Miss Jackson the, the only way you can get movie sex in your marriage is if you physically plan it <laughs> bro and, and by the way you get that once maybe a year like say you get say you plan a nice movie scene with the missus and you, you know you do the whole thing and you come back on Thursday she's like this what do you think this is <laughs> <laughs> oh take two <laughs> no, what do you think this is <laughs> now that was a one take <laughs> oh you, th- you thought this was a run <laughs> you thought we was gonna take this show on the road now this nigga coming down with another camera <laughs> 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 this nigga got tickets and anything oh uh, bro like I'm... movie sex you get that once in a blue moon if you're lucky. Bro, it's amazing how well, it's good that you know this. Um, but I think there's more subtle ways in which uh you don't realize how your uh, your perception of what sex is like is is already made up for you before you even get there, and you realize how wrong it all is. Oh yeah, it's because wrong. This, yeah. like I feel like most people, if you ask them like, is porn real sex? They'll be like, no, of course it's not real sex. But then when you start to look at like what you think real sex is, you realize how much of it is porn is put in there anyway. <laughs> how much of it is porn and movies? Exactly, it's all and porn music. and movies. Yeah. So it's like when when, when man is saying I'm gonna put you in seven, yeah, seven yeah, yeah, positions yeah, yeah, for yeah, seven yeah, yeah, minutes, yeah, yeah, seven yeah, hours yeah. or whatever. Or, or Jamie yeah. Fox said to Fantasia, I'm, you know, you you I'm a grown man. You don't even know your body here. I'm gonna touch you in so many places. I'm gonna get the back of your knees wet. And we're like, whoa! It's like, who, what for? Bro. Nobody says, do you need that though? Do you need the back of your knees wet? Do you, do you need that? No, bro. Now, now you have a conversation saying... with the girl, she's named there. I want you to make the back of my knees wet. Why? Yeah, bro, bro, well, Jamie Foxx sang it to Fantasia and it sounded good. Bro, and there's so many women guessing about what they think they want based on what they've heard. So th- there's, th- I mean, it's going to be an epidemic. There's going to be hella a and emergencies in the next 10 to years of fair. women being choked out and they realise halfway through they don't actually like being choked out. They just like the sound of it. All to of be that... fair, I feel like it's a miscommunication from both parties. I think of men course. over-promise and under-deliver. Of course. But I the, think any you man have who to. thinks he understands a woman's body is lying to himself. Bro, if you're, if you're in that casual sex world, how many people are saying, look, let me heat you up. Let me give you like four decent minutes, yeah, of pumping. But you know what? And my bu- my belly's going to be in way in the way f- for most of it. So I'm not really going to get that deep with the penetration. But I'm going to need you to just kind of work with There's me a, a position bit. on that, though. And change the position on that. If of course. But this that, that's when you're a bit more experienced. But no one's going to have that conversation up front and be realistic Why with not? it. Why not? Because most people are because most people are trying to convince a woman. Bro, the, 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 truth, the truth is this. The more up front you are, the more... The more, um, the more bullshit that's not going to be wasted. Remember when well, girls post that picture? It's like, don't. Um, why am I hiding my stomach? You saw what I looked like when you when you when you like the pictures. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm, that's it's very and real. That's real talk. But the, the so, tr- the truth so is when you're that sending the dick pics, don't hide the gut. Let it out there. 
If she don't like it, then she's not gonna come over. Why are you gonna kill yourself when she comes over trying to turn the lights off? Like, you know, baby, don't 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 don't, don't look left, don't look left. You know don't I mean? throw it back to you. <laughs> I let you know what to, I let every bro. But I, you know, is, I'm older though, innit? Of course, you. When older I was younger, as well. I guessed it as well. You know, you guessed you it. Would have guessed it. Throwing bro. Tupac Simk in there, you know, you know, I'm boy, you're black out, been a hoodie, like. What? <laughs> now I don't have time because now even when I'm saying when you get older and you're sexting a girl, she's like, oh come on, you to do that. Now you're like, do, do what? Uh, I nodded during during the text, girl. I didn't. Oh, you thought I was gonna do all of this tonight? Oh Lord, Lord forgive for me. You Lord thought you thought Father. this was gonna happen today? Nah. This, but yo, this is why I'm. I ain't even of, got my boss pass yet. I'm one of the biggest. I ain't got my freedom pass yet. This guy. <laughs> that don't come till Thursday. <laughs> I'm one of the biggest proponents of of proper like sexual exploration within marriage because one thing that. I think re- you really need to take the out of sex is, is p- wait. The, one of the things you really need to take out of sex though is the performance aspect of it. I really feel mm. like you know when you if if you're stuck in that cycle of like I need to ling it so that she doesn't go and tell them in the group chat I was bad in bed or so that she'll want to have more sex with me or whatever it is. That whole performance thing is uh, it's so destructive and it just only fuels more and more extreme nonsense whereas if you're with somebody and and you know sometimes it's not the sexiest thing for the movie but in terms of like real life being comfortable with somebody such that even if you do fart while you're giving strokes like you can laugh it off and keep going or maybe the fact that even if you I'm just saying it, it you have happens. to be married some, to some, fart but in, that's what I'm saying it, you, that's it. being if you're married you're having sex and you're gonna fart you have to be married you have to have a ring on your finger that's my point you though. can't fart if you're not having a ring on your finger that's my point so that's what I'm saying or like, if, or, or, but it might it might slip out and then now you're worried because you don't really have that level of intimacy with her whereas if you are married it doesn't really make a you difference g- though you don't no. you don't think so I, I really you do you were never that. there for the level of intimacy anyway you were there for the ass. What is the thing? I and here's the thing about here's the thing about what you said about guys saying, "Oh, she doesn't talk about me in the group chat." I have never seen a guy who has been a one minute man, been a trash man, yeah. been a cheat, been anything that these women say. Are you a bad demon? Mm. I have never seen him struggle to get women. Never. They never struggle. You can tell a woman everything. Oh, he cheated <laughs> yeah. on my cat. Okay. But they'll say he probably won't do that to me, and he'll get the next girl. Mad. I've seen it all the time. It's a mad world. So bro. the idea that you're yo, like when that girl, if if if, the, if this is when you get older, you realize these things. Yeah. Let a girl go and say, yeah, you got a small dick. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Guess I got a small dick. That's not gonna stop me from getting anything. It's not. Ah. <laughs> it's not gonna prevent anything. Nah, for me, it's a menace, They don't know bro. I have a small dick in Scandinavia. You are a menace it's to like, society. It's like when bro. I walk through custom, do, 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 small dick guy. You know, all the ladies get a ping on their phone. For me, in town. The small dick nigga just arrived on the COVID app. Then. <laughs> on the COVID app, small dick niggas on. You, you know. recently been in contact with a small, small dick. 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 That's not gonna happen. But we let those little things. It's like when um guys say I'll put you know when guys say oh I remember one guy was trying to uh, slut shame this girl that he owed, that he took money from. Right, he took money from her. Hey, you brothers are like, moving different. She's like, you took money from me and you know paid my money, you know, but you're out here, you know, doing all these things. And she actually put out how how it all happened, how he came down and he beat and whatnot. Yeah, and so he's embarrassed that she's put, you know, like she she put his business out that he gave her head, and okay. this is where you, you have to really. For me, I understand what you're saying about the marriage thing. Yeah. I'm just saying let it be a mature thing, in it. Don't give the pump or the dick to kids, because this is what hey, you're hey, doing in more ways than what one. What I meant guys. was what I meant was. Hey, um, whoa, whoa, whoa! What I meant was when I meant kids, um, immature people. Yes, I, mean, immature, I, I get immature, what you yeah, meant, but not not kids like yeah, like um, you know, yeah, like R. Kelly, <laughs> like R. Kelly, yeah. no. <laughs> what I meant was in a mature level because his whole hang up you owe this girl money yeah. but the only thing you didn't want the world to know was I gave a head y- y- can you yeah. imagine that mind space yeah, so he bro. comes back on the attack about her, like I didn't come in your mouth she goes hey, oh, whoa, yo, yo, whoa, yo. Whoa, but, no, but this is the best up. part of the whole conversation she goes yeah I like that though this is me I like, what's this girl's number <laughs> That's a soldier right there. Fools. You know why? Because she said, yeah, that's that's she my thing, though. <laughs> that's my thing, though. Like, yeah, oh. I, I wanted to come in my mouth. What's, hey. what's the problem? You're the one who has a problem saying you gave head. I don't have a problem with that. Do you know what's mad about what, what just happened there? You know like how you said that for guys, like, even if you, like, you say, oh, you cheated or whatever, he's still going to get more girls. Yeah. 
if a girl says like, yeah, that's my thing. That's Whoa, what everybody that's, was like, everybody <laughs> sided with her like, you're wasting, yeah, man. Bro, that's what I'm saying. You got, man, you got a girl the... who was willing and you che- you took her money, bro? <laughs> We need to start talking to men, you know. We need to start talking no, to men. That's how you that's how you end up at the protest with the <laughs> megaphone, like protect, protect black, black women. women. We need to protect black women. What's this nonsense? What is this nonsense? Protect our sisters, Isn't man. It, man? Bro, she said that's my thing. And I respected her because it's like don't nah, put that on her. You can't shame the shameless. You can't shame bro. and she's not but she's not it's never yeah, right, you can't shame the shameless. Yeah. And the point is this why should she be ashamed of that? Why? Why? Yeah, I mean <sighs> Apart Why? from my my own personal views on how sex should be within marriage, I mean, like really and truly, if you're if you're out here doing it, like own it, like you you did it. Well, so even for him, thing, he should really be works, at that point. The world does not work within the contracts of marriage. So yeah. there's people outside of marriage who don't want to get married. There's people doing whatever they want to do. What mm. I'm saying is this: no one gets to judge that person. You do not get to I put mean, your cap on it and say. You know, you do yeah, get you, to judge them to a certain extent, but but I mean, they can judge you. Everybody can get judged, exactly. and the Bible—that's that's why the Bible yeah. says, "Thou shalt not." That, that you shouldn't judge because actually, that's yeah. Ooh. The Bible does ask you to judge people, but not. But who are you to judge anybody? It, there is no one on this earth that can judge you. Nobody. You're only supposed to judge other believers. Like if you, if a believer is, but even then, even around, in itself. Oh really? So yeah. do we judge pastors when they're stealing money? Well, we should. We do not. We should. We should to a certain extent. We should, but we yeah. don't. Well, that's we let that slide because he's doing the work of God. Well, I mean, and that's the hypocrisy really of our democracy. Yeah. That's a tr- that's a Chris Rock line. I don't think that's a church line. <laughs> but what I'm, but that's why there's hypocrisy. That's why people don't take the church seriously because it's like, well, you can call out this bullshit, but you ain't calling out that bullshit. To be honest, though, the church has a, a decent history of calling out its own people at times. We we hear the scandals where like some guys flipping, stealing kids, and still gets to keep his church. What about stealing money? And the ones what about promising money mansions well, in there's, heaven there's when a there's lot of, there's a what lot about of franchise churches men. that just keep money and do telephones and say you're going to be healed by Thursday? None of that is true. Well, I mean, it, it, yeah, obviously it depends. None of that. You do you know how many people go to Africa? How many white evangelists and run a telephone and just take their money, promising them of a better day? And all they see is a white man praying for them. But no one calls that out. I mean, you do. You do get that. That's the thing, though. It's what maybe what's elevated. But in terms of for somebody like myself, who's fairly deep into Christendom and like I listen to sermons um, from different pastors, um, I regularly attend church and so on. There, there are people really speaking out for the right thing. It's just, the, you know, the problem is, is that it's like social media. It's like everything else. What, who... Who's getting the most likes? The person who's saying, "Look, this isn't right. We need to do the right thing," or the person who's saying, "You're gonna be rich tomorrow." The person, who, yeah, that person's gonna get all the likes. So you think that's what's really out there? That's you know, one guy saying all of this, and people mm, like so to one guy gravitate a massive to it. Following. That's my point. It's they more about the following. It's the following. So then that's why. But then that's why I say I don't listen to the church to judge because you can't because you're in the same um um, um cesspool as everyone else. There's motherfuckers fucking in the church. Of course, of course. You know? but I mean, but it, the, and, and that's the other the other side of it as well. The church isn't for um, saints and uh, what well, saints, yes, in, in that sense of the word. <laughs> but, but who do you turn away for, the most? Or? But that's the that's the whole point. The church is not supposed to be like the church is supposed to be like come as you are. But we love you enough not to leave you there. So it, the idea is you can come and you're gonna have you're gonna make mistakes. You're gonna do some things that are wrong, but you're gonna get better but as every, you go but along. Every time, well, in my experience, yeah. when I messed up, the church was the hardest. And that's messed up. The that's, church that's made me actually. feel the most uncomfortable. The church was the last place I would go to for counselling or help. Yeah, and to be honest, there's a lot of people who've done that. Da- there's a lot of church hurt, for real. There's a lot of people who've done damage to the um, like to I have, people's I'm, spiritual growth. But that's the reason why, <laughs> like, a good pastor is hard to find, but they're, they're golden because, like, specifically my pastor, and I always big him up everywhere I go. Like, him working through me with some of the things that have come up and some things I've said to him and so on. To me, I, I'm like, this dude has a supernatural grace on him because the amount of patience he has, like, he's come to my house personally at 10 p.m. to settle a fight between me and my wife. Like, as far as I'm concerned, that guy has an incredible amount of patience for seeing people's lives but improve. But that's, how, so many, how many members in your church? I mean, we're at, you know, maybe 150 now. But here's the thing. My dad's a pastor. Yeah. And he said to me one time, you know... And he settled a fight for the next door neighbours, if I remember correctly yes, from previous my dad, episode. my dad... Well, this is the interesting story. My dad settled... Um, settled. My dad told me one time, because he's, he's a pastor in Redeem, and um, he you know, said to me, you know, his vision of... God gave him a vision of 
twenty thousand member church. Mm. So I said to him, "Why do you want a twenty thousand member church?" I said, "You have members who know you on a first name basis, as in pastor or daddy. Mm-hmm. They come to your house. You've helped them pay bills. You've been at their at the um." at the detention center when yeah. they were about to face deportation. Mm. You've got lawyers for them who've taken them to immigration court so yeah. they can sort out their papers. You've helped them get jobs. Yeah. You think half these pastors in the franchise churches will do half of that for their members? No. no. This is me, you're a people's person. Mm. What makes you a great pastor is not the word. It's your availability for these people. That's what makes you a good pastor. I now, agree my dad with you. has not got a 20,000 church till today, mm. but he has real people who will do real things for him. I, I agree with you. I think we shouldn't despise the like the small local church. That's like really, really important. And I think everywhere you've seen, um, you know, a community change, I, I, you, you, it's not far behind that you see some kind of church involvement, whether it's use of the building, whether it's a pastor who's involved, or whether it's people from the church who've gone out to help. So that that aspect of the local church has to be there. That the, the growth aspect of the church... I think sometimes it gets messed up because originally it's supposed to be like, I want to see more people's lives change, right? I want to see more people come in. But then bit by bit, it turns into like a business growth target. It is a, and it's, it's, like, it's a franchise. Yeah, and then it just a becomes a bit like, and like having a McDonald's. Thing. that has, like Having a McDonald's, having yeah. the best raves. I remember Gathering of Champions, you'd get the best pastors all on a flyer. And that's what attracts people. Mm. But this is the word of God. It shouldn't be about who's on the flyer. You should just say Gathering of Champions and people should flop because what? We're here to hear the word of God. But now we we em- we put it into MC categories. Yeah. But we don't want to hear just rap. We want to hear Jay-Z and yeah. not Nelly. We want to hear Park and not Usher. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. We start breaking it down to who's the best. Yeah. Who's got the best bars. And that's, that's what it becomes yeah, about. I mean, human beings naturally, it's part of, of our problem. just separating into hierarchies where it's not necessary. There are, there's, there's always a need for hierarchy in some areas. Right, you need somebody who's going to be responsible and in charge, and somebody who's going to serve, and so on and so forth. But when it comes like, yo, his bars weren't really hitting. I, I need to go get that new uh, Creflo Dollar mixtape. Like, that's the the part where you know. But that's what it's, what's attractive. CD Jakes. But I, I feel like that's has, the whole wealth plan is attractive to people. But I think also it gets most of the attention. I think if you look at it, most people attend a local church and just do local things. Oh, and yeah, re- yeah, really there is that. There is that. But what I'm saying is, but what to, to where we go back to in terms of judging, I'm just yeah. saying, if you look at Nigeria, for instance, yeah, there's an underground gay scene. It doesn't, there's a, a documentary about it. Wow. On thinking. It's incredible. Mad. Because when you isolate people and take stuff away from them yeah. and they have to think... They, they become the most creative people you can ever fucking think of. Yeah, yeah. Because they have to figure out how to do their own things. Of course. They have their underground radio and they open the radio and say, welcome to Nigeria where there's five churches on every corner. Yeah. That's how they open. Now, they're underground. Yeah. Do you see what I'm saying? Because they're gay. Yeah. But you have five churches on every corner. Yeah. Doing what? Well, th- yeah, I think the, the church aspect in Nigeria is definitely... A joke! Uh, <clears throat> you know shocking but i said the other day like imagine nigerians praying to god and god's just in you know heaven with the angels and jesus like what are they asking me for Mad. i gave them land resources i gave them a brain what what did we miss something god's going through the manual did i forget to put a switch in his like, like you think why people who fasted and prayed to get to this level here but they killed everyone <laughs> you know what they did they asked god to bless them with the hands so they could kill. <laughs> <laughs> the Catholic Church sanctioned slavery. Yeah, that's cool. Bring them Bro. niggas home. <laughs> oh, that's how man. they prayed. So what I'm saying in the essence, I don't know how we got here, but... And yeah, I'm, I mean, we are talking about how you got treated when you're sinning, like when you're having sex and, you know, why how the church plays a part. I didn't in. say having sex. I said when I failed and it was just exams. Yeah. I, I wasn't uh, even having sex church times. Oh, okay. It was after church. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I was going in church, but the thing is, what I learned okay. was as well, you know, it, it, it doesn't matter, man. The, the, that, that, that whole world was set up wrong. Some people, are, and some people bear mm. the sins today. Like a friend of mine, she got married. Yeah. To, to, to someone who you would look and be like, I know, I know trash radar. Yeah. You know yeah. why? Because I'm trash guys. Yeah. So I know the radar. Yeah. So as he said, look, my guy, I said, what? This is your husband? (laughs) (laughs) He's supposed to say, brother, Fumbi, how you doing? (laughs) He said, my guy. He might have changed. He might have changed. I said, woo, this guy about to ruin everything. And like, 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 they just, 
they just the church made her docile. Okay. In the sense where she just didn't know. She didn't she thought I prayed, I fasted. Mm-hmm. God has revealed this man to God does not reveal anybody to anybody. I just really don't think he does. You don't think so? No, I think if you believe hard enough, you're gonna see this nigga. I really do. <laughs> I, I, I feel like some people will be saying like, like God <laughs> This one, yeah. This one, this one. Show me this one in my dream. Yeah, if you fantasize, if you feel about something, you can see it. And yeah, there's I, I, no way she saw this guy. As, there's no way God did that. No way. No, but you don't She's know that. She's too good bro. a Christian for God nah, to play a game like that. You don't yo, yo, know yo, yo, that. We're gonna, gonna really surprise her. <laughs> nah. in, in the Bible, <laughs> hey, God hey, made hey. a prophet marry a prostitute. Hey, bro. did she stay? But here's the thing: was she buffed though? No, my. <laughs> <laughs> here's the thing. Here's and the she thing. went back to the prostitute. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Um. I'm, I, I, hey, listen! You can't make a hoe. Like, you it's can't a, marry a yeah. hoe and then say, "Oh, why are you hoeing?" Yo, that was my calling. My the point calling. is, oh. my point is, that was not what she desired at mm. all. You know, and um, it's hard for her, but she was very naive. Okay. Sometimes you have to be in the streets, man. Just a little whiff of the streets. Nah. It, just, it just warms you up a little bit. Because <laughs> what you don't want is that blind side of like, I've never been in the streets. Nah, and and that's and uh, she, you know, she saved herself for this person. She was yeah. sex before marriage type person. Five years of marriage, and the guy wasn't even dicking it down. As it, she did, uh, okay, ruined the marriage. So she's come out of that young girl, buff. And now, what do you think she wants to do? She wants sex. She want another man. It's too stressful. That's yeah, that's and that's the that's, the, that's the that's the that's the um things I'm trying to protect the my clan. When they're going in the world. Like, my my cousin's going uni. She's 18. I told her. She's going uni in Cardiff sides. I said, listen. Ah. You're not only boring it, but enjoy yourself. When I say that, I mean, ain't no need for you to be coming home drunk to the, and, and waking up in someone else's room. Like, you don't need that. Ah. I told her, zero dick. You told her, zero. Zero. But here's the thing. I said to her, look, if you won't respect yourself, no one will respect you in it. I can't tell you what to do, but just please respect yourself. And that's it. But I had to be real. I said, boys are trash. All they want is pussy. I didn't say pussy because I didn't want to throw her too hard. But I did want to say that just to let her know how raw these niggas can be, man. But what if she comes back to you and says, yeah, busting my mouth, that's my stuff. I like that. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> you see? You see? You see, how, I, you see how the other I girl say, was a thoroughbred? Then, then I say, as long as it's with your boyfriend. Because the what thing, if she's like, no, that's my thing. Like, what, I like just with open guys? I like meeting guys and I like them... But then we have, up, to, then the club then we have to call mum and dad and say what the hell happened when she was seven. So so why did you say that about the first girl? Ho, no, that's a different diff, that girl has trauma. Plenty. <laughs> no, 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 no. I know her. I know her. She has plenty. Oh, plenty. The one that lent the money. Yeah. She's got she mad trauma. Issues. She got issues. She doesn't she doesn't The guy was a road man. Yeah. He came she met him online. He brought her down to London. She's from Birmingham. She came down. Oh, then Right. She was like, Oh, she said, um, you know, we had sex, the sex was good. He said he needed 80 pounds in my mind. You know, I'm trying to help my man. And I'm just like, you just, you just met this dude. <laughs> so there, so her, her, the only thing I saw, her thing was, her, tr- her, her, her trauma hasn't allowed her to make good decisions about what a man is. Okay. Her man, her, I heard the uh, idea of a man was them road guys. Yeah. But the get me, man will come and pick you up and hold you down, innit? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. She liked, that's the world she was from. That's the world yeah. she understood. Mm. So back and forth with men, abuse and stuff like that was what she was comfortable with. Okay. You see know what I'm saying? Okay. So yeah, it's not about the busting in your mouth. It's the, it's, it's the way it happens. Okay, I mean, I, I I get that, but I think fundamentally, you know, even the way that you switch from like that she a thoroughbred, like what's her number to like when it was your, your that was niece. a joke though. I I know, yeah. I know, but I mean, I mean and I meant that I meant that in respect to her defending her corner. Of course, of yeah, course, not and that's, like, that's that I want to bust in her mouth. No, that if you know if you saw the story, you knew this, I knew this girl. Mm. So that when I saw this whole thing, my, my heart was bleeding for her because I know she's being used. Yeah. Because she doesn't have the self-esteem to know that this is not the standard for you. This is beneath you. But she didn't have that. So when she said, yeah, but I like that, though, that was a victory in the sense where you're trying to make her a hoe on top of that, trying mm. to shame her on top of that. Yeah. But she's claimed it. So good for her. So it wasn't a thing of, yeah, I can't wait to join in that. That wasn't that. Yeah. It was more of a good for you. Don't let these people, don't let men shame you like that. I, to be honest, though, I'm not. I'm well. In this situation, I am 100 percent on her side. But I think some people do need shame, 
I think you, you can't, this lifestyle of like, don't let people shame you, I think fundamentally ignores the fact that some things you do are shameful. And like what? Who gets to say what is shameful? That's the question. I, I think your own brain sometimes yeah, but will that's tell you your that business, you're though. ashamed of this. But that's your business. That's your... I. What I'm saying is... Well, if, this, if, is, this is it. This if is you don't, what I'm saying is if, if you're in that inner council or mm -hmm. if you're in the inner circle, you can do that. Mm -hmm. But if that's not in your... If it's not my... I don't care. You could do what... I don't need to... I don't need a clean society. Well, it did, well, yeah. I mean, I'm not talking about, you know, just a random person online or whatever who doesn't know you. But, you know, if... I think there's an element to which shame is healthy if my daughter came back but that's your daughter older, we don't yeah. shame our daughters we shame people we don't know we want to shame cardi b we want to shame usher we want to shame celebrities those are not our business no, if they want to get on their knees and spit on someone that's their business they're not my family true if my family's doing it that's a different story true but what i'm saying to you is right shame plays a healthy part in our in our development we learn what we're not okay with and what shouldn't be good and oh really you know, the, the but who, 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 who is out here saying i learned because i was shamed i just told you the church no, no, shaming no, no. it fucking me up no, no i'm not saying we learn by people shaming us right i'm saying that shame is a natural part of our yeah, but what we're talking about is people shaming not okay you so, shaming yourself so in the case of people trying to attach a certain shame to you yes what i was getting that is there are times where you actually feel shame mm -hmm. but you you basically make it that somebody is trying to shame you. No, it's the fact that you feel ashamed about it. Because if somebody's trying to shame you mm -hmm. and you don't feel any shame, but like I said, you can't shame the shameless. If you don't already have the shame, right, they can try and say that and then you tell them, what, I like it, what's the problem? But if they can say blah, 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 and you feel a way, then that should tell you that you yourself are not 100% okay with what but, you did. But yeah, but it might be case yeah but then this is all scenarios because the truth is no i think that as it a might principle. become it might not really because the shame person that it might be coming from might be someone who's like you don't get to shame me because i know your shit okay but the, then now now you're getting no now in that situation you do feel the shame but you're trying to defend it you're being defensive yeah, because i'm by, not going to let someone who i'm not going to let a man who i know cheats on his wife tell me about relationships but at the end or of trying to embarrass me about something no you cheat on your wife bruv I, and I'm saying that being defensive in that way is f is fine, but that's separate from the fact that you still feel some shame about what you did. But that's not that's not. And the, I'm saying and I'm saying that, that that shame is a useful part of our development as human beings. But that's that's not our discussion here. Discussion here is people shaming. So I, you having yeah. that shame of yourself yeah. is whatever in whatever instance. What you I'm want saying to is have. that people can't shame you unless you have some shame about something. People can shame you. People can try and shame you. People can make you feel embarrassed about it. People can something. try to shame yeah. you. Like the guy tried to shame that girl. Yeah. And she said, What? I like doing it. Yeah. Right? No shame. Okay. I'm saying to you that if you start if somebody tries to shame you and you're like, that makes me feel like crap. Yeah. I'm saying you feel like crap. And they're triggering something in you, yes. They're tapping into something that's already in you, but it's already in you. And I'm saying that part is necessary. We need to we need to have a certain amount of shame about things. We do need to be able to feel like I am not happy with what I just did or how I conducted myself or how I presented myself. Yeah, but that's you. That's good. We don't what I'm saying is we don't need you to come and start doing it. I don't need you to start piling it on. I don't need you to try and make me feel like I'm less of a person. I can do that myself. I mean, do you know what? I I I, I think on, in most cases we, we other people shouldn't be doing that, but I think in some situations it's needed. If it's, I, I if think, it's someone in your family, if it's your brother, your sister, your child, yeah. yeah. But if it's someone you don't know, that's none of your fucking business. Would you, if you ever, you know, like if somebody was, was watched a politician who just stolen a bunch of money. Yeah, what's my money, business with that? And, the, and someone was and, screaming at them. You, you would say and, that it's not your place to shame the and, politician. And, and, okay, Matt Hancock was caught cheating on his wife. And. No, but I'm talking about where you don't know the person, but what their actions have affected you. In some How? Way. Like, they are your MP for your constituency. They've misused the funds. Can you try and shame that politician? If I want to, I can go on Twitter and say he's a cunt. Okay, then. So, shaming people isn't necessarily... That's not shaming, though. That's accusing him of doing something he did. No, but I'm saying that, like, if you try to appeal to the fact that he should be ashamed of himself for, for basically what he's done... <laughs> <laughs> Where's that going to get me? 
as shame Shame. anybody politician as that had done anything. Look at Matt Hancock. He's going to live nice. He niced his whole family up before he got shamed. No, no, bro, I think you take it for granted, but in this country, there's still some shame. What's going to happen to Matt Hancock? People still, people's careers are still affected as politicians in this country by shameful things they've done. Nigeria, that's like a proper what? that's proper shame. Like what? Like which one? Like I'm saying look people, at Tony people Blair. that have to step look down. At Cameron. Look, at, look at um Fingy. Look at the shameful things they've done. Yeah, Their careers I'm, have flourished. Um those guys who are the most powerful, they probably so there's have an exception a bit more. to every rule. Of and course the there is. The reason, but what I'm reason, saying is the general rule is in this country, if you're caught doing something pretty shameful it's some there will be some kind of consequence. There's and always you, and consequences you, for what you and do. And even you, in the for the sake of not embarrassing the party or not making it a circus, you might have to step you down. Step down. Yeah, but that's, that, that step down is a it's, it's into another thing. Look at they do in America all the time. Mm-hmm. Bill Clinton got his dick sucked in the Oval Office, so he I'm, bounced yeah, back. You, you're still talking about the people right at the top. But that's, like, it's, it's I just said like your regular thing, MP. This is, thing, this is the thing. It's not about the people at the top. These are human beings. This is how people behave. This is people. We're the ones who hierarchy them because maybe they've achieved great things or they've done this. The fact of this, he's still a person. He still should be shamed the same way a guy in McDonald's who did that should be shamed. But we won't do that because we're like, you're in McDonald's. You should not be doing that. But we are yeah. now, we will allow a Kanye West to do what he wants because he has money and he's made great records. Yeah. And so shaming him is different from shaming someone else. Of course it is. Then then that's it's... why it's all bullshit. Because it's hypocrisy. Because how can oh, you? Oh, it's definitely hypocritical. Right, and but, that's why but, that's why I'm getting in the sense where shaming people is it's hypocrisy. Because my, where my, do you get off? My point is right that when we shame people, mm. regardless of whether we are right or wrong, right, we're, regardless of whether we have good motives, we're shaming people evenly, whatever it is, right, you can't shame somebody who is shameless. So if we if you try to shame somebody, and it has some kind of effect on them some kind of emotional effect where <clears throat> or even just like a perceived public effect where they feel like they have to step down now they have to come out of the limelight i'm saying that, that in and of itself is not something we can get rid of right because there's a lot of I people say we should though. there are a lot of people who well you said that we shouldn't really you shouldn't be shaming people no you shouldn't not well, if I'm, you I'm don't say, not people we don't should. know anyway i feel like some people should be shamed and i feel like most people when they think about being shamed, they think about maybe themselves being shamed or someone be, well, being shamed shame, then, then for why something would, that they do. <clears throat> but everybody employs shame at some point. But why didn't then? Then why did Jesus say to the people he without sin cast the first stone? Why didn't he just say, "Yeah, shame this bitch"? Um, because the whole point there was that grace is needed, which is what we all, which is what we don't apply. We don't apply. You never said mm. grace is needed. You said shame is needed. No, both of them are. No, shame is but not shame, needed. No, uh, no, that's I think, what he's pointing out of there. You don't need to shame this woman. No, because there's 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 two types of um, there's two types of sorrow you get from shame in the scripture anyway. There's earthly sorrow and godly sorrow. Godly let's sorrow, take away the scripture. Go- let's take away the world we. Let's uh, put in the world we live. in. Okay then. So let's put it in just in in, in secular terms. In. Just the world we live in. All right. Cool. There's there's shame that makes you do better, mm-hmm. and then there's shame that makes you just feel depressed and pull mm-hmm. away and mm-hmm. so on. Mm-hmm. Right. Now, if 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 you are if if we're talking about the first one. You can actually get positive results out of this, depending right? on the individual. So, like, so I'll give you an example. Um, a, a, a child is misbehaving, and their favorite teacher says, "I saw you misbehaving, and I expect much better from you." Child is ashamed of their behavior, and they go, "Do you know what? I don't want to let that teacher down. They do better." And then there's, um, "I saw you out there with that boy. Why are you behaving like such a slut?" And then you, as a girl, you feel really beset upon, and now you 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 either just feel down and depressed, or you go further into it, and you're like, "Screw it, nobody cares about me," or whatever it is. One is productive, and one is destructive. Obviously, the destructive side, nobody wants that because nobody wants those kind of outcomes. But I'm saying that shame does have a purpose. But you're, in, but in what you're saying, what being, you said, is how you display this word shame. Yeah. When you when you shame someone to embarrass them, yeah. it can have equally it can have effects each any which way. Yeah. But when you like you said, if you if your favorite teacher saw a child misbehaving, she calls him to the side and say, yeah. "I saw you misbehaving earlier." Yeah. That's I'm disappointed in that. Mm. That's essential. Mm-hmm. That's character development. Yes. That's telling someone. That's holding someone accountable. I agree. That I, yeah. I expect more from you because yeah. you are, you come from maybe a good home and whatnot. Mm-hmm. But to just shame someone in front of a classroom, and I've seen this happen. Yeah. To just outwardly really trying to embarrass the person, yeah. which is what human beings love to do. Mm. We don't want to just make you feel bad. We want to make you feel like a, a like a piece of shit. More time because of what's going on in our lives. Yeah, yeah, yeah. None of the shame has anything to do with yeah. what that person has done. Yeah. And that's what I'm getting at. 
that idea that people have to feel like shit so we can feel better. Yeah, I don't, I, I don't, yeah, that's, if, if that, if, if you're talking about shame in terms of making someone just be embarrassed. Yes. So it's like, you know, if someone I, said. I don't agree with that. But yeah. If you, if you appeal to something within them that says, I expect better of you, you should have expected better of yourself. Yeah. That, but that I kind also of shaming, don't, I'm I not also good. here for drilling that, you know, just, yeah. You know, like for instance, on Twitter, someone mm. messes up. It's not everybody's time to throw their sixpence in. Yeah. It's like we clearly have something wrong in ourselves. Of course. Of course. If we want to make sure. It's like. Um, of course. Because the same people that will be shouting, don't shame her for her body, don't shame her for this, whatever. If they throw up one guy and say this guy doesn't pay uh, child support for his children, they will shame that guy till the end. So you're not actually against shaming. And also, even the you girl don't want said, this guy to be shamed. Well, also, if they say don't shame her for her body, da, 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 yeah. let her say, um, I'm here for abortion. Boom! Oh my goodness! How did I looked up to you? You know it nah, changed. Nah, some some women, nah, that abortion so thing, a, it's changed now. No, what, 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 People what, cheer what, 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 you on. No, um, I think abortion is a sin if you do yeah, abortion. Yeah, okay. Let, nah, a woman, let that same woman say that. Yeah. What? Bro. We thought you were this. Da, 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 da. Exactly. And that's why I never played the right person. Yeah. I played the foul. I'm low. I'm dirty. Hundred percent. I have bro. no morals. Even as a Christian, bro, I'm I'm ashamed that, of myself. I prefer because, that position <laughs> because then <laughs> you can't call me out, bro. That's why I love being a comedian. Yeah, absolutely, I love being a comedian because I can talk about my faith, but I can tell you that, yo, <laughs> yeah, this time five years ago, I was probably jerking off, bro. Right, and, and then that way, right, it, that way right. it disarms you, so you can't so then come, go come on to me and say oh, you were cursing yourself or something like that. Yeah, went on stage. So, you know what? I, I wanted to be productive most of the the pandemic, but man, I just got high and watched porn a lot. Everybody laughs. Yeah. It's a joke, but I'm being therapeutic. Like, yeah, you can't judge me. <laughs> you know, because the truth is this: I've seen it with the role models, yeah. the Michael Jacksons, and the da 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 da. Yeah. But the fall is a lot. The fall is hard, you know. Do you think a lot of Nigerians end up comedians because that's the way we can deal with the the strict upbringing um, no. in a way that's not being judged? No, I didn't have a strict upbringing. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> the said I read the streets. You know the maddest thing. You know the maddest thing. A lot of us did not have the wild upbringing we all had. We just take segments of that upbringing and magnify that moment. Like the okay. moment your mom, your mom locked you in the toilet. That becomes your whole childhood. You forgot the month. You forgot the time <laughs> your mom, your mom and dad, the little Christmas party where they were dancing and singing. The parties they used to throw where you're just we used to yeah, drink all night. I mean, of course, trauma definitely holds a bigger head. We just we just latch head. onto the trauma parts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But and that's why you know it's important. Like I said, when we're writing about our characters to show a different dimension there is an air that africans don't know how to love there is an air that we don't know how to you know mental health in our communities and there's no everybody had these these withdrawn parents i did not have withdrawn parents in fact my parents were too on it yeah but you said you you said at the beginning of this that not many of us have seen our parents like hold hands or show affection i don't need to see that <coughs> my dad tried to tell me about when him and my mom had sex the first time. I said, yo, 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 whatever I've done, I'm sorry. Okay? <laughs> I, but we don't need to go there. We do not need to go there. Because he was Father. grilling me. I told you my dad is the talker in the relationship, in the, yeah. in the family. Yeah. My mom will punch you in the throat. My dad gives you essays. Yeah, yeah, so we were yeah. in one of them essays. I don't even know how we got to, you know, said the first sex I had with my wife. I said, the first? You had sex? <laughs> <laughs> I said, when? 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 What time? So yeah, I didn't need to know that. I'm not cut from that cloth. I'm not here for the the lack of affection in my house made me a I'm not that person. Yeah. My mom my dad was very emotional, so he cried when he needed to to support his family. My mom is um my mom's like an introvert, but she's a very loving woman. So okay. I had that balance and I had beautiful family members around that gave me that rounded picture of love. So mm. I've never really seen that. I, I've seen Nigerian parents who were just as loving as my mom and dad, who I call mom and dad today. And I also had the parents who, when you go into the house, the sounds like you have to sit in the kitchen. You're like, why? My dad doesn't let us sit in the living room. God damn, y'all in prison. I used to pray for them. <laughs> <laughs> may, may love come into this house. Because, <laughs> oh, like, I shit you know, people would come to my house here and see my dad and be like, that's your dad. I'm like, yeah. Like, what's the problem? That like, you don't get it. Yeah, but I mean, your, your dad had a bit of a non conventional. Yeah, my dad used to smoke life. with his dad. So. Yeah, you smoke with his dad. Yeah. Oh snap! Yeah. It's intergenerational. Oh, it's not, no, no. My dad used to drink with his dad. So my dad used to give me, okay. give me beer. My dad would let me drink with him. Yeah. <laughs> Can you imagine that? that? That's he did like, if I that's see you drinking, <laughs> I see you drinking. But that's because he was a Christian them times. Okay. But at that time with his dad, my dad was a rascal. And my dad was a street guy. Yeah. Like you know, man them, not crazy, but just goonish. Yeah. Okay then. So, but then he became you know a responsible father. But 
what I'm saying is, uh, I don't believe we ha- all had these strict upbringings. A lot of us, we go back and realize our parents were cool. Have you ever looked into like street gang culture in Nigeria? There's cults. There's yeah, no cults. street yeah, gang culture. Cults. You know why? Because, like I said, we have a respect factor. Yeah, it's not good to just be doing nonsense. There, on the there are area boys, but area well, boys I mean, but are protection. Even. Have you seen the documentary on um, Netflix? No, I want boys. It's area boys. In Nigeria. Okay, yeah, it's too short. So okay. like thirty five minutes. And, you know, it was actually cultists I was gonna get to, but yeah, the cults. cults, the cults, the cults, the cults. I think are fascinating, bro. Amazing, but the thing is, you can't write about them. Yeah, because they mean, don't like the mafia. They don't. They don't. They don't see the script as good things. They see it as you're snitching, bro. Yeah, until we can get I to mean, that mindset yeah. of you're the mafia of Nigeria, boys. But did these men put all their business out on YouTube, bro? Do they? Yeah, it's all coded, but it's all it's all My on YouTube. Was a cult member. Huh? My husband was a cult member. Uh huh. Who? My husband was a cult member. Oh, uh, 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 told me some stories. I was like, he said, "Yeah, man, yeah." That time I left before that. Yeah. But that cult thing started picking up. Apparently, it's been there for a while. It was like it's like everything in a, in a broken down society. Yeah. People assume the gangs, like the Bloods and the Crips, the Mafias, were all formed yeah. to create violence. Yeah. They were actually formed to protect. Bro, they were formed because you're in a foreign country, and they're also they're always formed out of we're not getting. We're, be, we're being mistreated or marginalized here. Yeah. And the same thing in Nigeria. You go to any university in Nigeria, you're going to feel marginalized. And so the cults were formed. Initially, it's all about... The first one was was actually just about brotherhood as well. Absolutely. Kai and a bunch brotherhood. Of it's about challenging the, the pirates, system. Um, it's about challenging the system. Yeah. That's what it is. They're intellectuals. Yeah. But as it trickles down, as the OGs die out, yeah. as the OGs get taken out, I mean, even Wale Shinka is like, cults right now are not what we started. It's not what it was supposed to be. Remember when I said, if Tupac said, don't take me out, the game. Because the guy behind me, (laughs) he will have no mercy. So when they took Fela and all those people who were speaking out, they took them out the game. Yeah. Now it's free for all. For real, bro. I mean, my my pastor told me, he he let it slip one time in a sermon that he was a cult member as well. And he mentioned this cult, so I started looking at it. I always look at, like, the cult stuff mm. on YouTube because I just find it very fascinating. I find it, like, that's our version of these mafia stories. Absolutely. But, like, anyway. So, bro, like, they, they have... There was this particular cult. They have these, like, long videos, which are... I don't know what to call it. Like a broadcast in which so-and-so will give their name, their chapter, who they're associated with. And they'll tell stories of like basically drillings that they've done, mm. but they'll it's all coded. So like if it's you know um, this particular one is based around birds, right? So um, they a lot of the uh, positions that they hold are named after birds. They'll talk about so and so fly safe. They'll talk about you know like so and so is moving as you're going. They have words that they say to each other. You even hear like there's some that are based around. Like see being um a, uh, like marine stuff like the original cult is the pirates p y r a t e s, um, uh, they've all got nicknames as well. But that one they will talk to each other like uh my ever it'd be rugged stay rugged, my okay. rugged sailor that kind of thing. Okay. So they've all got their own languages and way of speaking. But then they go on YouTube to basically put the message out there to the whole gang like this is what's going on in the streets right now. And that's and you know to see that they got chapters. They, these these guys are killing each other in Malaysia. They're having fights in Dubai. They're they're doing like global meetups in Switzerland. Like this is not just a joke. These are people that have like gone into government. They've gone into business and so on. But they still hold on to this cult thing, and then they're like, you know, because you're have that in. brotherhood. You're Bro. blood in. You don't get signed in on some form. Bro, they, <laughs> you, they've killed you someone you can't, to you get can't, in. You can't unsubscribe you can't from the mailing list. <laughs> yeah, you can't just cancel your package with Netflix on some. I don't like the movies you added. It'd be like, yo, GDPR you says have I can unsubscribe from this. You think the KKK Bro, is real. just retired? Say, nah. ah, you know what? This life is dead now. But they went into the next level. You think the right, mafia is done? No, obviously we know that we know no. that Vegas is still run by the ah, mafia. In Vegas, here's the thing. When the casino gets. Uh, robbed or you all went to a casino. Why do your legs get broken? Why don't they get letters like the rest of us when you owe any respectable institution <sighs> money? Why are your legs, uh, bro? We all owe the council or someone at some point, and nobody come around to break your legs. I never owed the council. <laughs> well, you know what I mean, right? You yeah. know when you, yeah, I don't I know, know what whatever. 
I know what you mean, bro. That you might have had or one yeah. train ticket you forgot to pay. No one came to break your legs. They're still breaking legs, though. I don't want to, I've never owed the mafia and right. I don't want to find <laughs> out what they're breaking out. now. But my point is, the, you know, eventually... Borrowed money from the mob. E- eventually they realised, you know... Um, Yesterday you lost going, your job. Um, what's they, what, what they realised, which is why the mafia is very progressive, is one, you have to go undercover. The, the idea of being the boss and the main guys just prison. sitting in an Italian restaurant right. and like and it's either you're going to get lit up or you're going to prison yeah and then second of all they realise you have to put your children in office so the Mayor Giuliani's and all of them people they're all mob related all mafia related their Uncle Paulie was the one that got the unions to vote him in and other you know yeah and that's how they maintain power yeah and so now it's just a case of let's just enjoy the spoils no beef on the streets they still run the drug trades and everything like that but they keep it nice and tidy the government's not angry every now and then one guy does takes it too far we do an extravagant drug bus and we the citizens are like yeah they're doing they're taking up the drugs man and you know we start again yeah yeah i mean sometimes you know whenever you hear about like that elliot ness kind of story uh, i'm i'm like is he, is he did he really did he really but was he the thing, super though, cop that took thing, down though, for every superhero there's a super villain right yeah, and what the world is clever, what they're but clever at is we sell both sides. It's, this is why I told you, yeah. I think it was Warner Brothers. I think it's Warner Brothers. They were the major distribution deal for Death Row Records. So once the Death Row Records makes an album, Warner Brothers distributes it. Yeah, you know what I'm saying they got a yeah. the big pool. It's a big money deal for them. Mm-hmm. They distribute the music. Warner Brothers also own CNN. On CNN. They talk about rap music as it should be stopped. <laughs> Bro, the game is cold. The game is cold. So one, one of the music's PR team was like, get CNN on the phone real quick. We need to shift another 10,000 units. Yo, 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 as soon as Tupac album's dropping, one call, yo, sell Tupac's album, pull them, wonder why they call you bitch now. <laughs> CNN, they say, wonder why they call, call you, you bitch. <laughs> And then just watch the money fall down. Can you imagine pa- Parks in the me- in the in the meeting with the A and R's, the executives? Like, you know, I really want to put a dear mama. And they're, <laughs> no, and they're no, no, like, no. we need no. more hoes and more bitches. <laughs> 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 you know, I really want to change my ways. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Do you ever something like? Have you ever thought about doing like a hit him up? <laughs> <laughs> I heard Biggie was saying something bad <laughs> but, about but, but, you. <laughs> do you not think that can, they can find that too, bro? Uh, say Biggie was dissing your sister. Boom. <laughs> It's all about then the executive money. Start, start suggesting lies. <laughs> how, about, how about you talk about sickle cell? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Because here's the thing. They heard that and said, don't one of you niggas got sickle cell. Ooh. Do we know any sickle cell campaigners? Because <laughs> <laughs> for them, all they care about is the money. Of course, bro. Of course. I think That's it was Warner mad. Brothers again. Or one of those TV shows. You should watch it. It's on Netflix as well. It's about how entertainment can go too far. Okay. And this guy ends up um, going on a show and one of them, you know, it was how reality TV um, chat shows back then. Yeah. And it was Sally Jeff- J- Sally Jesse or one of them shows. Yeah. And it's one of them ones where, you know, my, a gay guy has a crush on you and he's brought your national TV to tell you. Bruh. First of all, these shows first started as like, you know, we'll do it anonymously. Then after this one, after this guy got killed, they were like, we're going to stage it. Because he brought the guy on and he told him, you know, and he said, you know, I'm not gay. It's cool. Thanks for letting me know. But he had a thing about him saying that on national television. Yeah. He didn't like that because now he went back to his ends. And this is when gay was still a bit sensitive to people. Yeah. Now he's going to the little truck bars that he goes in. They're like, you gay boy? It's like, no, I saw you on TV. You know, I don't know how people can watch TV and get a totally wrong understanding. (laughs) <laughs> I'm telling you I'm not gay but you're on TV though yeah but I'm I'm right here now but do you know what it is do you know what's mad about it you know when you're when you go on those shows yeah they put the title of the show right under your right, name right here in yeah. the bottom of yeah, the screen yeah, yeah. and they'll just write a quote, a quote they'll just yeah. write I'm gay and I'm here to tell you yeah. then the camera's focused on yeah. you for three minutes someone yeah. looks up at the TV yeah. like hey this dude's they gay they give you no chance bro so that thing bugged him even know? when we used to do Fumbi Talks bro it's the same thing bro right. you just put that it's in at the bottom thing, yeah you know, and the thing is, it was bugging him. Yeah. And so he pulled up to the guy's yard, and the guy was the guy was not sorry about it because he was getting his little TV fame off of it. Mm. So he was that annoyed him. You know, Americans, you know, white people, guns, they're gonna kill each other. 
So I'm sorry, I shouldn't say it like that. You know, yeah. we, only, we only report like that when it's black people. But anyway, my point is here. Um, he pulls up to the trailer home and shoots this motherfucker in the head. Wow. As he opens the door. And so they were going to sue um, the channel yeah. saying wrongful death suit. Do you know what the channel did? They feel, they broadcasted it. They broadcast what? To, the, to, trial the trial. Of oh, themselves on their bro. own network. Bro. Which they won, by the way. The game is cold. <laughs> That's when I said to myself, I don't have morals. Nah. All I was bro. watching, me and my brother were like this. I need to, I need to Google this properly. Warner Brothers were suing themselves on their own channel that they streamed for everybody to watch, which everybody was watching, by the way, because it was time of the century, like because it had never happened before. So everybody was interested. Bro. Warner Brothers were just laughing their monkey ass off. They were getting the ratings and they were winning the lawsuit. <laughs> <laughs> So Ola, when they when people say to you, do you think racism is bad? You're like, bro, I'm trying to get paid. Uh, I want to be that guy. When I was watching Meghan Markle, you know, the Oprah interview, I didn't watch it, but I saw the snippets and whatnot. Yeah. All I heard was CBS was making was charging five hundred thousand dollars um advertising space, and Oprah made seven just short of seven million from the interview. And all I could say to myself was, why am I not in this conversation? <sighs> bro what did I do wrong like, did I not pray enough <laughs> bro we all got to work hard man <coughs> you got to work hard then I asked the question Ola, Ola, do, do you have 500 would you like to advertise in that period of the opera <coughs> depends what I'm advertising you had your little company Sunday service Sunday service show yeah <coughs> I don't think that that would have served my aims at, for a comedy show but if let's say I was selling you know, like a family goods kind right. of thing. If I was selling like toilet paper or whatever. Okay. Yeah, then hell yeah. 500,000. Yeah, no problem. Can you imagine that? Super Bowl starts at one mil, bro. <laughs> bro, Super Bowl starts at one mil. Bro, I've got tears in my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> well, eh? One mil. Yeah, bro. Who has one mil just ready to... Corporations, to bro. And then you're supposed to say to me, "From we do good in this world, I'm stealing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm stealing, bro. You know, one look. Ha, this kind of money is not that far away, bro. It is. <clears throat> it's not that far away. You got we water, could do bro. it. We could do it, bro. My I mean, in a madness. <clears throat> water to drink here, and there's tissues. Yeah, there you go. Do you know what, though? I just don't. I just... <coughs> well, uh, God damn! You just caught COVID right here in the studio. What's going on? Hey, we gotta take a little technical break while uh, we get some stuff together. Thank you. You see a little water down the throat. And then when okay. you got the yeah, 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 yeah. That's that'd be the worst as well. You almost kill yourself <laughs> off of nothing. You know when you're trying to talk through it as well, you just need to let it rest. Yeah, yeah. So go on and talk. <laughs> <laughs> what I mean is, if you get that kind of money, yeah, you change. Of course you change, but what I'm saying is like it's not that that crazy. Like the idea that you spend. Half a mil on an advertising space or a marketing campaign or whatever. Like you're not that far away from doing it. Like you could you could quite easily find yourself there. You know, if let's say you have a few clips that that pop off online, and you're now going for a tour. Let's say you can spend half a mil on a marketing campaign. It's not not not, 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 off, not off of a couple of clips. Are you mad? No, I'm I'm not saying just because of the <laughs> clips. I'm saying you now like that's the reason you now take off. You're doing well. You have to be doing very well to spend half a mil on advertising. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's not that far away from you, bro. It is far away. Plus, I don't need to spend half a million advertising. Yeah, because for but it's got to it's it's not like that. that. Yeah. It's just that. All right, relax. <coughs> I understand it. But what I'm saying is, if you have half a million to spend on advertising, you've changed. You're a devil. It's a, it's, it's a corporation, though, yeah. bro. It's not like it's not one person just dropping, <coughs> hey, throw half a mil on that real quick. It's not even just half a mil. Like, they're still going to vet you. Like, it's not anybody could actually just take the slot. Because you got half a mil. Why not? Why can't drug dealers do it? <laughs> <laughs> I've got the money. What's wrong with my money? My money ain't good? No. How many, of you need shoes like this? How many bars of soap? Nah, there's still advertising standards. There's, there's still a there's TV station. There's advertising you're standards. Run. Oh, really? Yes, bro. Bro, y'all have standards, huh? Yeah. Can you see the elitism in that again? Of course, bro. Come on, man. So but we can't even put a little 250 together and say, listen, we want to plug Sunday service during this. But fuck is Sunday service. Yeah, I mean... It's 500,000 worth. That's what it is, bitch. 
You could you could possibly put sunny side on, but there'd be rules there, bro. And by the time you've gotten through all of that, it just wouldn't even make the thing sense. Is, to the you. thing is, it's capitalism at its finest. Of course, that's yeah, that's, that's, what, that's what that's what the whole world is. Yeah. The whole, well, I mean, not the whole world. There's still parts of the world that aren't fully capitalist, but isn't you there? Know. Is there? Yeah. There is. Yeah. Where? Um, Venezuela. That's a part of the world. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Negro, I mean, please. they they do uh, what's it called? State capitalism or something in China. I think Cuba is still a communist country. North Korea not, as well. Cuba is a communist country. It's not working out well though. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> they ain't renovated since that motherfucker died. I mean, North Korea is supposedly communist. This nigga drinking all my water. God, China's communist. It's state, but I like how they do it though. Bro. Yeah, I like how they do it though. I like I like that concept of believing the nation. Yeah. Like Switzerland, they don't have they know they don't have other cheese. You have to get Swiss cheese and you can't get, you know, you have to everything has to be a Switzerland product. I like stuff like that. Uh I might with it, but you know. Like I would prefer Nigeria to not buy Coke. I'd have to have it to have his own version of that and his own version of you know, cereal and stuff like that. I mean we do, but it's still the same multinational corporation. You know, if you're eating Nigerian cornflakes, you're poor. Is what they're gonna say. Could they afford? Could they afford conflicts? This is conflicts. Oh, they afford conflicts. It's conflicts. It's just a Nigerian brand. <laughs> You're right, and yeah, that that aspect of things is is still messed up with it us. And we've discussed that a couple of times about how we don't value our own stuff. No, but when I in Nigeria, if you went to school and you had I think Vibino, the communist side of things is is you know is. I think it's it's just an example of how something in theory starts with this noble cause, but in practice, human human nature just doesn't allow for it. This idea that everybody's mm. gonna have be equal and mm. everybody's gonna have the same amount of money mm-hmm. after a while, mm-hmm. like there's no point in living because if I can't stunt, then what's the point in working? The hard? truth is, the truth is, you should tell people, you know, uh, if you want to have that, you know, money that they've told us we're going to have, yeah. just be prepared to be able to to kill people. Are you ready to kill? If you're not ready to kill, if you're not ready to be comfortable with someone being as hungry as hell so you can stunt on the MTV Awards, then then don't worry about it. <coughs> Just work in KFC. Because the truth is this, we can't wait to quit that average lifestyle and remind everybody who we left behind how well we've done. We can't wait. Yeah. We don't want to be successful so we can just help the needy and make a difference some people do nobody does there's, there's, there's been one or two people I've who've never been met very anybody. impressive nobody. you haven't met them that's N- never, never heard or met no there's um i was reading about this guy as an example he set himself uh, the only guy a i know salary. is the guy that made polio that the guy, the guy that killed polio and gave it for free oh i didn't know about that though. yeah he found, was it polio polo yeah po- polio is it polio yeah polio yeah he, he found, killed it and he, he's he even that the guy who made paracetamol or one of the two he okay. gave it for free and everybody was mad because they were like, how much money you could have made from this? Well, yeah, this and he was like, he's, that's not what he did it for. But bro, that's a good example right there. There's, that is. There's he's an guy, idiot though, but that is a good example. <laughs> the, the guy I was going to give you an example of was like, he basically set himself a salary of what he needs to live and look after his family. Everything he makes above that, he goes, he plants that back in to his community, to charities, to guy? whatever it is. I can't remember his name. Okay. I remember I was reading about him and I was like, I respect that. Yeah, I, need to, I need to do due diligence. Yeah, no, I'm you a, check I'm a where big these extra funds go in. I don't believe none of that shit. No, there are there are people in this world who who aren't ruled I don't by think that, just I don't, making more. Nah, there's no one that's not ruled by making more. We're all ruled oh, by making more, man. I don't know if cash enough is never enough. Me. Cash doesn't rule everything around you, but you haven't started making that kind of cash yet. The True. truth is this: like, we make a million tomorrow. We have to figure out how to make two by the next weekend. Yeah, you, kind of. Kind no, Ola, of. we have to. We, we mean it's not gonna last by the time we buy Gucci, a plane. To <laughs> 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 like you oh said, after what if I can't stand, why am I making all this money? I'm done for me. How can you say I'm gonna you get buy sucked Gucci in? in you know no. what it is? You'll get sucked in as well. You're making that money. You start bumping in Spike Lee. Let's go to dinner. Yeah. A thousand pounds for fish? God damn. I got it though. I got it. Next thing you know, you bump into Oprah. Let's go to dinner. Hell yeah. God damn, these niggas eat. <laughs> These niggas yeah. eat a lot. Y'all ain't never been to ZZ's? <laughs> you're, you're suggesting I know a little spot near my local. They are local. <laughs> and so your lifestyle changed, your taste changed. Don't forget, you got a wife. You're making millions now. She ain't sitting there thinking we have to go and be humble. Where's the MTV crib? 
Where's the heated swimming pool? Where's the electric bathtub, the jacuzzi and all of that? I and that costs money to maintain. Of so course. So you have to yeah. make more money. Yeah, bro, but it, the thing is, like, for most people, right, mm. you reach a point where you're making enough, right? And, you know, you're making for enough. For most people or for select people? I don't think for most people. I think most people get to a point where they're making oh, enough. Oh, would you? M- wait, 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 wait. Most... Define enough. Enough to live or enough to front? N- enough to live. Enough to live, right? So then, then, okay, then, yeah, then, then, then everything above that is fronting, right? Yes, like, yes, I want to yes, get a nicer yes, car. Yes, I want to get a house, yeah. So if you as a person, right, if your whole driver is to front more and more on people, then yes, of course, there is no end to it. Mm. But if you have a certain lifestyle in your mind, mm. once you get there, and if you if you cap that as where you need to be, then to be honest, in the grand scheme of things, you don't need to go out and make more money. And I've seen people who've reached that level of lifestyle and they've said, you know what? What matters to me more now is spending time with my family. So I'm going to do less time at work. How much money did they make before they got to that level? For one, it's like tens of millions. But um, for another one, uh, it was a guy that I knew. He basically made... I think he was kind of in like the baby millionaire category. Like uh, like he had... By his assets maybe were worth a million. Baby millionaire, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Like he, like, so he couldn't walk or anything, could he? <laughs> nah. When you're around other millionaires and you've got little two million net little worth. Two million net worth. Yeah, you're two years old why compared to the other... Why are you other millionaires when you've got two million? This is what I'm telling people. When you have two million, you hang around poor people No, but I'm to saying, make I'm them say, feel bad. I'm not saying he is doing that. I'm just saying that... But like, here's the thing. You he, just he, said he, to me... He yeah. was in a good place, right? He's got, he's got his house... He's got his family. And he said, you know what? My work was taking me all over the place. I'd much rather be home with my family more. Switch to another job that can just keep him ticking over. The house is paid for. He's doing well. No, as but what I mean is... I respect that. No, what I mean is that's surprising because like you just said, when you're around other, around other millionaires who are making you feel like shit for having yeah, two million, he wasn't re- you wonder where the desire to say, you know, I'm a fuck out and get 10 million. Where does that come from? But I, I, he wasn't really hanging around with millionaires like that. Everyone, everyone, the people that he actually introduced, he actually introduced me to someone that gave me a job. So they were all kind of in that, what I, what I jokingly called baby millionaire category. They're all doing well. They're all doing very, very well. They can pay for whatever they want. They can enjoy themselves. They can go see their favorite football team. They can look after their family and so on. And they were happy there. And that's cool. What you don't want to do now is now start messing around with athletes and entertainers who spend their money different because they get their money different. That's when you're not satisfied with what you have. But if you're around family people, you're doing really well. Yes, you, you got but to, you got the to world, con- like I said, the, but that, that is the level of content that God wants us to get, to be content Amen. with yeah. what you have. I think to be content at every level is really the key. Which is hard. Regardless of it's whether hard. you have it's it It's hard to be content at McDonald's level. It's hard. Of course it's hard. It's hard to be content at open mic level. It's that's, hard. That's the real key though. You, got, you can't be content at open mic level. You've got to climb up. Nah, no, contentment, happiness with contentment is great gain. The truth is, when you are content where you are, okay, that's how you actually move forward. Mm-hmm. I hear what you're saying. Because you if, you saying? Are, if, you're, if you're content at open mic in the sense where yeah. I'm, I'm going to treat Not this. Not complacent. Yeah, I'm going to treat this as yeah. respect. I'm, and, I'm here yeah. at open mic. They yeah, put yeah, me, yeah, I got yeah, the, yeah. I got the I mic right saying. now. That When you start performing, people feel like they need to achieve to be happy. But funny thing is, is when you're happy, you tend to achieve. Mm. So if you, it's like you can if, only be happy to it. You can only achieve. You can only, you can only achieve when you're happy. This is it. When you're miserable, you don't achieve shit. This is what I'm saying. And so, you know, even that open mic situation, you ha- you come at that with the right attitude, they'll move you up because you're doing your job, you're doing it well faithfully. You know? Mm. So that's why I'm just saying that, like, look, for me, like, it's, it's a struggle. I'm not saying I've got it. I've figured it out. But I'm trying to make sure that if you catch me right now today, I'm happy. Lord, I thank you. I thank you for these lights. I thank you for this little TV we done got. Thank you for these little mics we done had and our little recorder right here. And then if you put me in the biggest, fanciest studio, we are Abbey Road recording Boys Quarter Podcast. Lord, I thank you for this. And if we go back and we're both ha- haggling over the a phone and we're, re- we're speaking into the iPhone and trying to record the podcast, Lord, I thank you for that as well. That's where you really start to experience joy because now it's not, you're not, so not so dependent on circumstances you know that's but that's kind of where i want to be man it Tell comes at you fast it. man and that's the thing you know we read all these things these these things that fill our heads up with, with goals and desires all, all that, the wisdom quotes all the wisdom quotes the 48 laws of power these times <laughs> I, I, the, the amount of people i've known that read that book and have zero power <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, damn, nigga, I'm 48. You ain't got one, <laughs> bro. That book should just be filled with 
The number one law to power is <laughs> writing a book called 48, 48 Laws, Laws of power, power and get people to buy it. Buy it. Because, Bruh. like, do you know, like, you don't think this is... I had a friend, she said to me, she read The Instant Millionaire. I said to her, sometimes it's not good to be a comedian because your mind just says, oh, bro, happy for, enjoy this one. Oh, so bro, I said to her, have you ever met anybody who was a millionaire just instantly? <laughs> she said, no. I said, even the guy that wrote this book, he gave you a backstory. <laughs> <laughs> this is me. How long was the book? She had about 200 pages. Well, it's a bit too long, isn't it? <laughs> it should be, I woke up and boom, one million. That's, that's what I want to read. <laughs> the guy that wrote the book that gave you his backstory. <laughs> Even he gave you a beginning. That's funny. I'm going to write that. I'm going to use that on stage. That's funny, bro. That even, I was like, even he started with a contents. <laughs> bro, you gave me There was a story. forward. I was born in There was acknowledgements. He spoke about his childhood. <laughs> Nothing happened instantly. <laughs> this is me. He must be laughing. I can't believe people would buy this. Bro, and the mad thing is, where you probably will find instant millionaires, like the lottery, for example, <laughs> the biggest examples of people who go broke within five years. The vast majority well, of lottery, her, win, lottery winners go broke within five years. When did you years. buy the book? She said, about, you know, three months ago. I said, so... so Where you at there? So you can, you, are you able to borrow me 20 grand yet or not? <laughs> bro. She ain't made a dime yet. And do you know what the mad thing is? The bookshop she bought it from, the publisher. Oh my God. The distributor. Everybody's been paid. Everybody's been paid. Everybody has been paid. You put your money up front. By the way, he he needed a tax write-off, the guy who wrote the book. Yeah. Because he's a millionaire. Of course. He is. And he needed a tax write-off. Or maybe he's bored. Someone approached him. You should just write. He probably saw the game. You know the game. This is a new hustle for millionaires. <laughs> Teach people how to become a millionaire. But knowing they would never become a millionaire. Bro. It's... Now, I don't, now part, of me is, part of me feels bad because I like what he did. Yeah, like you can't, like, can't, you can't, can't, can't the, hate yeah, on Yeah, you it. can't hate the game. You can't hate the player. It's it's um it's a whole new term called the infopreneur. Wow, no, nah, no, nah, that's cold, man. The infopreneur, the, the infopreneur. guy that tells you how to get it, bro. If, if think about it like this, yeah. If if you are um, let's say for example, you grow watermelons. Right? Okay, why why watermelons, bro? Why not pineapples or apples? I grow watermelons, you know, because I'm black. I must have watermelon lips. You grow pineapples. You know right? what? By the way, if just, you, sorry, if, just to quickly segue, that watermelon reference is so not offensive to black Brits over here because we're like, it's like <laughs> we have to like receive that. <laughs> you know, just like you have to be okay. told to be offended about that. Yeah, yeah. It's like, oh, I didn't know that. But All go right, on. So let's say you 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 farm like you grow pineapples, right? You go and sell the pineapples, right? You get what one dollar each. Let's say you go and you okay. go and put the, the work in, you have the ground, you okay. grow up the okay. pineapples, okay. Okay. you go and cut them off. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you make one dollar. Okay. If you're an entrepreneur, mm. then what you do is you go buy the, the pineapple from that person okay. and make smoothies. Yes, yes, yes. Right? Yes. Now you sell the smoothies for five dollars. Yes. So you you then you then take you know, one dollar <laughs> yeah. into five. Yeah. You've actually you've actually got four hundred percent return on yeah. your initial investment. Yeah. All right, so most people stop there and they go, yeah, I want to be an entrepreneur. If you're an infopreneur and you say, look, I'm going to teach you how to build a 400% return business that's going to have you flipping your money and getting rich by tomorrow using only pineapples. People will pay you $100 for each one of those courses, right? Because they're like, he's going to make me millions. Now, in that situation, you have put almost zero up front except for any marketing budget, but everything you sell is 100. So in, 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 in the infopreneur world, you look at people who are flipping farming and stuff like, what are you doing? Like, mm. you breaking your back, you shaking trees to get coconuts out and, you know, checking your harvest and making sure everything's good. And I just made twice what you made for the whole day in a second just selling it to somebody, the idea of it. And in a world now where we're all moving towards like digital content and ideas and knowledge-based economies and so on, bro, the real money is there. The real money is in like, let me give you the information on how you could do it. Cause then you don't have to deliver any results. Do you, can you imagine like no one's ever come back to say, you know, this online course I bought, 
It didn't make me a millionaire, you know. I want my money back. But the truth is this. They collected though. their money the up front. The truth is this, though. The thing is this, though. I can do a masterclass in comedy and say, because yeah. I've done it. People mm-hmm. can see, oh, yeah, he must know what he's doing. Mm-hmm. But the truth is this. It doesn't matter what I tell you. Yeah. There's a whole heap of luck, chance, of course. looks, d- moments that, that none of the teaching can compensate for. Of course. You understand? So, um, But that's because you still have scruples that you're saying this. If you didn't care... I don't you, care. You, you I'm don't... only saying this on the podcast. Oh. <laughs> bro, you might as well have a course out right now. No, nah, I wouldn't have a course. I can't teach comedy. I'm saying, bro, you don't even need to be able to teach comedy. That's what I'm saying. I know. It's if mad, you give people it? the idea that, that they You could know what? You're right. I'm not that person. That's what I'm saying, you're right, I'm not bro. that person. Because you need to I'm too record, cynical. You record 10 videos, 10 steps Honestly. to becoming a great comedian. Honestly. Number one, delivery. Number two, mm. like how to be polite to, to bookers, whatever it is. My you make 10 <laughs> videos, like you put them all out and you just put them online. You get some video ads running. So every so often, some poor comic somewhere who wants to make it goes, oh, I'm buying from these course. Wow. And you just sit there, you go to sleep. You know, my brother did backing vocals at Wine House, right? Yeah. And it's a 10 year anniversary of her death. And so everybody's about, you know, and one guy was like, one of the singers was like, he's doing master classes in how to make it in the industry. And he was like, in his plug, he was like, soul singer, da, 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 and the number one, the, the brain behind Amy Winehouse is two albums. <laughs> and I was like, you listen, man, hey, hey, people need it like this now, man. The brain behind it. No, the, he kind of said the, the, one of the main voices behind it. You know? <laughs> This Obviously, you oversold it, of but course. but this, isn't that the world we live in, though? Isn't he right for doing that? And bro, my day to day job is sales, and I'm realizing more and more, bro, that like people, people almost require you to lie to them. Honestly, and I, bro, I can't get my head around it. It's like tell me lies, tell, tell me sweet, sweet little lies. lies. It's almost like we're more comfortable and with a lie than the truth. Because if you told people in church, that's what the said, Kevin Samuels theme. Can you imagine if the well. pastor actually told people in those prosperity churches? I'll be honest with you guys. In this congregation, the way I've been, I've been, I've been pre- preaching to you for ten years. I know none of you are going to be rich, <laughs> <laughs> and it's not because God's not going to bless you. It's just you don't really have the skills to get money like that, bro. Can you dunk? Can you no. rap? That's the no. that's a quick flip. Okay, are you able to start a business from scratch? Do you have capital and stuff like that. Let me tell you guys all the truth. How I got rich is by telling you lot you are gonna be rich. <laughs> it's by pre, and you know you lot invested, and I use the money because I'm smart. I'm actually smart. Do you know? Yeah, the, you know? You know church, the pastor, the pastor Matthews, the pastor, the TG Jakes, the Creflo Dollars, yeah. the Joe Austins. Don't doubt it for these are very charismatic, intelligent men. Of course they are. Because that's Ooh. why they can pull off that vibe. What do you mean, bro? This is, bro. This is like. At the highest levels of emotional intelligence, of mm. persuasion, of I told you, Crypto Dollar one time said a bar. Oh, y'all don't want no church this evening. I said, God damn, don't we? <laughs> <laughs> no, why? Why? Why do preachers always be finding new ways to try and extract the amens out of you? you know why? Oh, y'all ain't gonna give me no amens today. That's all right. That's all right. That's all right. I don't need y'all amens. And you're like, oh, amen, is, pastor. One thing I love is how they they tap into your. Sometimes you got to tell folk not to mind their business. <laughs> you be like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes folk going to talk in your family. You're going to tell them not today. And you're just like. Some, so, sometimes you've been doing everything you need to do. You're doing the right thing. You come to church. But there's haters in your life. <laughs> and people are like, yes. There are and, haters and, and, in my and, life. Don't let the pastor now quote a popular line. Sometimes you just got to dust those haters off. Oh, that's it. <laughs> that's now, normally the church is going mad. The Jay-Z fans are like, rah, rah. this is a Jay-Z. <laughs> Next thing you know, Jay-Z in the church with him. And you think, oh, Jay-Z give his life to Christ. No, nigga, what? Jay-Z selling albums in the car park. Bro, that's what Nigerian preachers are doing all the time, bro. You think it's just these um, American ones. The Nigerian ones are pretty much telling everybody like you're working hard you're saving up but somebody in your village is tearing what you're well, doing you in the spiritual realm you know and it's like that? no we just don't have that? decent roads right that's the reason why you're coming do you know what do you know, do you know did you hear when daddy thingy was attacking the church nigerian church pastors daddy freeze daddy yeah, freeze yeah and one nigerian pastor i said to myself by the way yeah it's it's typical of any kind of arrogance yeah so some people are talking about tights the tights I pay is super all of your own. It's, it's, it's more half of what I pay. I said, That's, that doesn't even sound right. That does not sound you right at be all, bro. like that. <sighs> Listen, the tights all of you pay is not half of what I pay to God. And then you do the pause. Like this. <laughs> and it was like that. 
People feel bad. I'm so sorry, Pastor. Bro, it's so real, bro. The it's way Gio so did it, Gio real. did the old school version. You know how adults dismiss. You know, they say one man was talking of that. Some people, you know, one man that <laughs> maybe he was divorced or not divorced. I don't even know. Bro, that was so <laughs> snaky, so bro. Stunna. Maybe he's divorced or not divorced. I don't know. He, he knows, you know. Of course he knows. Why would it? you bring divorce into it, bro? <laughs> what does that got to do with anything? What's that got to do with anything? They said one man was talking of that. Maybe he's divorced or not divorced. I don't know. They said, they said, they said maybe he used to beat his wife. I was like, whoa. <laughs> you, <laughs> you really <laughs> definitely in character right now, bro. You know that, but he knows how to avoid it. He's he like, maybe, like, maybe I, I, I don't, don't know. know. <laughs> so you just, I don't like to get involved in such uh, policies. <laughs> it's like, yes, you do. <laughs> Bro, that's that's some cold. That's game the ultimate. Right there. It's, it's, and that's the thing I want everybody to understand. If it's, if you're not hustling, you're getting hustled. Wow. And here's the thing: it's nothing wrong with getting hustled. It's like we all get hustled at some point. Yeah. But you gotta learn how to hustle, because otherwise you're getting hustled. Bro. The idea that ShareFell confidently increased the prices every year, bro, and there's nothing changed. They look us in the face, like, <laughs> bro. Oh, you like, know we about to put there was, prices <laughs> there was a time here yeah, one to two was seven pounds a travel card zone one and two was seven pounds that was in 96 i can't Dialogue even ask for, for, for one week one week travel card no way hey you can't even you can't even travel for england on a day on 67 pounds <laughs> let alone a week oh how much is those on one and two now bro i don't even know anymore i have to buy zone one to five and stuff like that okay one to four, how much was that five. a month I was paying for it was like two hundred and something, two hundred and thirty or two hundred and forty for one to four, I think. And they wonder why we come to work yeah. miserable. Bro, when you charge me that much to get to work, bro. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> I got to pay to get to you, you say that's how much it costs to get to your favorite festival. <laughs> You said that's how much it's going to cost you to get to work. Golly. And they, yo, do you know what, yeah? Those days I used to work at Canary Wharf, bro. Do you know what, yeah? If you're not careful. My chest. If you're not careful, I will go there. On top of that, I will buy lunch. I will buy 10 pounds sandwich and say thank you. <laughs> that charged me. Oh, Lord. Father God. I will buy 10 pound sandwich and, and say, say thank, thank you. you oh you might even depending on what kind of mood you might say have a good day bro have a good I wished day some... Why, while i go and cry in the corner for being this is me because we say like you know yeah you're gonna put like a little lube on that for me you're just gonna ram it in there just like that bro <laughs> you just take bro. your trousers down man bro 10 pounds on sandwich is shameless bro. and so like i said to you Ola, which side are you on? Like Tupac said, on to this side is going to be some real niggas, some real bitches. It's a dirty game, y'all. 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 That's the lie right there. It's a dirty game, bro. This, but when you listen to me, when you we we're talking, and you're like, ah, uh, Ola, Ola's ready to flip in, fund a terrorist group or whatever it is. Like Ola's just on some money laundering thing or whatever. It's not that. It's not that I really just want to do bad things, but it's just every Who said day. That? It was one day you were making a comment about me that like, nah, that's right up Ola's alley. Like, Ola's ready to <laughs> flip in, uh, you know what I'm saying, like, uh, fund uh, uh, an invasion and wherever. I can't remember what the point you were making was, but it was just that basically I'm turning to the dark side when it comes to... No, I don't think you're turning. Thing. I think you're very aware of it, though. I'm very aware of it. Like I'm, me, I'm, I'm just very aware, aware of it. it. But I think now... I used like, to think, you know, you sign a record deal and the record label just can't wait to put your music out. <laughs> I told you. Maxwell got signed and they shelved his album. He was Bro. like, you know, it's, 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 it's a Neo Soul thing. They're like, yeah, we're not interested in that. D'Angelo puts his album out. They said, Maxwell! What's up, baby? <laughs> nah, wow. They told Shaggy there's no single on his album. When he recorded, it wasn't me. It was a Hawaii guy on an online radio who was playing the song. He said he noticed every time he plays the song, everyone's calling him saying, who is this song and where can we get it? Next thing you know, it wasn't me. It's blowing up in Hawaii. The label called Shaggy and said, hey, why are we not touring the album? Now, can you imagine your Shaggy, Ola? The record label. By the way, my question was, Shaggy, who is listening to your music? Who's screaming your music? Right? So now you Bro. imagine, Ola, your Shaggy. They've told you there's no single on your 
album, then they get, they're barely going to put any promotion. There's no enthusiasm about the album you put out. They don't like it. Next thing you know, it wasn't me. It's blowing up everywhere in the country. They realize they don't get ahead of this, they're going to miss out all the money. And they call you confidently. Hola! Come on, let's have tea. How do you go to that meeting? You want to go there and say, man, fuck you, you didn't believe in me. But you know, I can't do that. Yeah, bro. And, and that's that's a big business lesson right there, bro. It's not personal. It's not personal. It's, it's not strictly personal. business. It's, uh, bro, <laughs> y'all don't take that as personal. Because all they will say to me is this. Ah, and all they will say to me is this. Listen, all that upset is going to get you nowhere. We were wrong. Bro, the song's it. hitting. Let's make some money. That's it. That's it. That's it, bro. And 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 you know what? Fundamentally, I feel like that's one of the my biggest uh, learning curves as a man is learning okay. to get my emotions out, out of my way. Baby, I learned bro. that the whole of last year when I called a friend who I really wanted to, to help me. Yeah, and he didn't return my call. Was it me? No, 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 right. no, no. Twice I, I called was, him. I thought you were at me. I just said your name straight away. <laughs> Twice I called him in yeah. that day. And I was going through that thing of, because I'm a, I'm a very sensitive person. Yeah. So him not calling me means he doesn't respect my life. Golly. <laughs> Golly. I did two times two, I got 67, bro. Bro. Yeah, you're not helping, but, you know. Sometimes, before my wife would be like, oh, your second wife is calling because we was on the phone talking. And now if she hears you say some stuff like that, like, oh, if he doesn't answer my call, he don't respect my life. Bro, I'm not going to hear the end of it, bruv. Well, the thing is, I was just like, but then I just realized people have things going on. Yeah. People are doing yeah, their yeah. thing. You can't take it personal. You can't. And so I never took, I stopped taking things personal. Facts. Especially as it came to the industry. I did not take anything personal. Facts, bro. And and you know what it is? It's like, even 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 in a situation where it is personal, there's, you, you, you have a choice. Is this going to be the defining moment? Like, so-and-so didn't answer my call. Whatever it is that gets you in your feelings. Like, oh, they didn't believe in me. Mm. Bro, do you know how many people I have to let... Bro, if I'm going to do you didn't believe in me, bro, I, I'm gunning everybody the first time I win an award. I'm like, bun you and you and you. But what, what, what to the, be fair, what I don't energy believe in anyone that, that? either, so I can't really be like that. <laughs> it's true. There's some people I didn't believe in and then they blew up. There's, like, some, people right, that, cool. there's some people that I've not given time to. Yeah. So what I and so when I called, and there's people that I thought would blow up, they blew up and they didn't remember me or whatever yeah, it is. Yeah, that's fine. There's people that I thought would blow up and haven't blown up. So it's like really and truly, none of us really know. No, you can't be attaching extra emotions to stuff no. like this. And I think you know, in that situation, let's say Shaggy had said, "Hey, bun you lot, you didn't believe in me anyway." Who would have been hurt from that? Him. Him. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So at the end of the day, let you won't be able to tour the, the, you be able to the album because they've already signed the contracts. You won't be able to yeah. go anywhere else. You just be in karaoke bars yeah. doing covers of your bro, own look song. look at Nick Cannon. But they took his show away. Bro. You know, but he came back humble and they realized there's good money to be made and they didn't take it personal. Because he came back humble. And yeah. They didn't take it personal. Because they could have said him bun you. All the rabbis. All the rabbis. <laughs> all of them. This nigga had them on a the rotor. Missing Rabbi D today. Mm. I said, I'll be getting kosher now. You know what bro. I'm <laughs> and, and, and that was the lesson. Again, that's another lesson for people. You feel like you want to be a voice of something or stand for something. Bro, you were doing well. You weren't playing black people on television. If you took that show away, we wouldn't have seen Godfrey. We wouldn't have seen all those young black people trying to make it. Mm. Don't ruin that because you feel like you want to be some kind of guru. You can't be woke and have ring card girls. At the same time, you've got to choose one. Let that brother be work with his ring card well, You girls, can't, bro. though. You can't. Bro, I mean, at the end of the day... Uh, you can't do wild style and, you know, bang bitches off the table and then be like this. You know, black people are the original Jews. Like, explain that. You know? Yeah. You can't. you got to stay in your bag. This is what we know you for. This is what we love you for. And that's okay. Not every black person has to represent wokeness. Uh, and that's a big point right there, you know. That's I don't need point. the guy who makes free throws every night, 360 dunks, boom, 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 come out and say, you know what, black people are the original Jews. Now they take you away because they're not going to have that. Mm. Now what's your voice worth? Now you came, and by the way, we've known you to be wearing, you know, you, you've never been about that. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, and this is part of the problem as well, though, is the fact that I can only imagine how there must be some kind of pressure when you're black to represent something more than yeah. you are. Yeah, and we need to break and, that trend. And I agree with you on that. Like, we do need the freedom to be ourselves. We need to stop. And we need, And we need to stop the idea that every black person you see, you have to want them to win. 
that's another burden that you put on yourself and them. Because they are, this is one girl to me, she just wants those, she just wants the penalty kids. Yeah. Because I said I want them to miss. And she goes, yeah, but I always want black people to win. This is me. They are winning. They've been winning. All right. The individually. One place for winning, Arsenal. Yeah. One place you for Manchester United. You wanted them to miss. Yeah. Because I wanted the nation to understand how they truly see black people. How you truly feel about your minorities. I didn't want you to sugarcoat it because they won a tournament. I wanted you to understand that the same way Marcus Rashford or Bukayo Saka can receive racial abuse for missing a penalty, we do that every day for just going to school. But you don't listen to us. But you don't listen to us. You're a wise ass Negro now, bro. But 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 here's the thing no one listened to me when I was saying as a kid. Uh, I hear you, bro. I've been listening, but I want it to come on, bro. But that's fine. You wanted it to come home. I didn't want it to come home at all. Yeah. I wanted it to stay out. (laughs) And I was so happy when England lost. There's something about England losing that just makes me so happy. My people are coming at me like, but you live here. So that is my birthright. (laughs) That's that's what I get. That's my birthright. That's what white people get for tampering with Africa. They get me, they get me living here. Bro. And that's the game. I'm happy with that. I, I, I prefer to. Anyway, we had this whole conversation before, didn't we? Closer to that time. Let's not get back into that. But, yo. I, but I, I mean, what I was saying was, um, I don't know what we were talking about. Uh, I mean, before that, we were talking about. We, yeah, the uh, idea we, that we, we want black like, people to continue black people to, win. to win. I think that, that, that attachment is too much pressure on both parties. Yeah, I don't definitely. need you to want me to win. I just need to support me if I'm good, not because I'm black. I mean, I think I think we all want a certain amount of love and respect as just as a human being, regardless of what we've done or whatever. Because even if we mess up, we still want it. Whether we're good or not, we still want a certain amount of love. Then there's a certain amount that you get of respect or whatever it is, or admiration you get for being good at what you do. But I think the the thing about the black thing is that it's a gift and a curse. It gives and it takes away. Because it's the same thing that we always say, like when you're smashing it in a black show and you're tearing it up and they give it up and they show you love. This the same audience that will make you feel like trash if you're not giving them what they want. So if you, you can't take one without the other. But that's like that for any gig though. Well, I think we say that specifically for for black ones because there's a special joy you, you get when you smash a black room. No, no. You don't think there is? No, it's a special oh, show you get me. when you smash any room. Eh. But I did a show on eh. at the Camden Head. Yeah. On remember I told you at the Camden. I always I enjoy that place. I don't know why because it's called the Camden Head. It makes you feel good. But my point is, um, I've not felt that this way. I, I felt so good that night. And there's no. no I'm not about. saying about feeling good. You definitely feel good when you smash a gig. But you, every time we talk about, it, you're like, yeah, they threw a chair, it stayed in the air. Yeah, that's just hype, though, isn't it? That makes you feel good. That's what I'm but saying. But I got that that's same th- feeling from that other gig. I didn't throw any chairs in the air. Are you serious? 100%. The same feeling? 100%. I think it, it hits different for me. It hits different. Like, what if I smash a gig out in where? why does it hit different for cool. you? Because you're looking for approval from black people? Maybe. Okay. Maybe. Because um, I don't look for approval. From, well, not anymore, anyway. I, cook, I don't care how they feel. I think I think maybe there is there is that need for approval from black people. In fact, I'd, I'd probably say there is. Yeah, there is. Why do you feel um, you need approval from black people? You're black already. They're going to love you regardless. But that's the thing. No, they're not going to love me regardless. They will if you're famous. Well, yeah, that's that's a big part of it. I'm not famous. Yeah. Um, but they still but, love but you, But I, I still feel like some black people feel like they have to... Some black famous people have to earn their graces with the black community. Uh, you like know, that's, where, that's where you see them coming out here doing all this woke stuff and whatnot to try and curry favour from black twitter and, and the like i i, I heard but kevin that's... samuel say recently that that's what russell wilson was doing when he was marrying sierra i, I don't know who russell wilson is russell wilson flipping star quarterback of super bowl winning uh, seattle seahawks all right so he's like team captain of a team that's won the super bowl okay right so he's he's, he's a multi-millionaire he's yeah a, but he's like he's seen as like just one of those black guys that's probably out with the white guys drinking or whatever it is. Okay. Then he marries Sierra, who's obviously fairly popular with black people. And now black women are always talking about Rus- Russell Wilson because he married Sierra when she had Future's baby. She's done this all these talks about, you know, um, the prayer that she, she, she was praying for a husband like him and she got him. Um, and also they take all these, do all these photo shoots and stuff. So like for him, he represents like, that good man that they've all been 
hoping for that after they done and had kids for the for the hood nigga, he's gonna come along and save them, right? So some people will say, Oh, this guy is, you know, he's moist, why is he doing this? Blah blah blah. But the point Kevin Samuels was making was that no, he got signed out of it too. He got ingratiated into the black community. No, I don't know if he genuinely did that. I think Kevin Samuels might have been a bit facetious, but whether or not he did that, I, I I do think you can see that some black people do make concerted efforts to try and make sure that they're good with their community. I have a brother who plays in, or, or a brother, a cousin who used to play in the NFL, right? Mm. Akbar Bajabi mm. I had a conversation with him on live, and um. I was talking about it for him. Like, do you ever feel like you have to do something extra for your community wherever you are? And he was like, you know, I don't need to do it publicly, but like, I still feel like in my local community, I still, you know, sponsor this or, you know, do something to, to try and help and give back. And, and, you know, for him, it was more like on a private scale. He still wants to be good in his hood. So whether you, you whether you like, you want to have that bragging right of like, yeah, my hood still knows me. Or whether it's a case of you want black people generally to be like, that's one of our heroes. People still feel the need to go back and get that validation. It's like a point of disrespect if someone tells you that nobody knows you in your hood. If I left Fort and Heath today and someone says nobody knows you in Fort and Heath, right? Like at the end but of the day- why would they know you in Fort and Heath? Do you run the streets? You're a fucking married man. That's my <coughs> point. That's my point. So for me, that one wouldn't really hit me so much, mm. right? But for guys like, I don't know, like, Stormzy or Crepton Conan or come on, one of Crepton Conan came from Thorn Heath. For those guys, like they'll be like, "What? What do you mean? They know me in Heath, man. Well, I came out of well, Heath." That's that's of course what that's what they built their whole life on, though. But that's my point, though. They need that that's validation from the hood, though. though. But that's the, the 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 basketball players and stuff like that is because they've come from those hoods and those hoods have carried you to where you are. So they want to always be nice. Carry them though, because you're the one that you they allowed you to play basketball. They hyped you up in college. They're the ones that gassed you on. The moment you get onto the What's age this guy ages. Play college out of state anyway. No, some you play in the hood. You always start at home. Rappers get hot in the hood. It's okay. the hood that makes you hot. It's yeah. the radio thing that puts you on. So yeah. basketball players from the hood. The kids, um, Serena, Serena. When they ask Serena's dad, if you make it to, if your daughter wakes it to Wimbledon, what would you do? He said he'll bring the Bloods and Crips to come and watch because they allowed his daughters to play tennis. Wow. So it always starts from the hood. It starts from home. Always. I got hot at home. All right, relax, brother. <laughs> relax, brother. So when you get... What you saying? Hackney's behind you, yeah? You know what? It's so funny. Is I was Hackney in the barber shop. The Apollo, bro? I was in the barber shop. Yeah. And the the youths in my ends, this is when I started doing comedy. I'd been doing comedy for a while. And the youths in my ends were like, hey, film me some Hackney, you know? You man don't know that. And they were like, what? Yeah, but I keep telling man he's from Hackney. For them, it was a pride thing that I came from their ends. Yeah. And he had to let everybody know yeah. that I'm from their ends. But if, 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 let's say, they didn't give you love in Hackney, would you feel a way? No. Okay, interesting. Why? Is Hackney my house? Is my father's name? Bro, bro, me mean, that I want to move, I live, me that I want to move, I can't live, I can't live in Essex with my family. I don't give a fuck about Hackney. Hackney's not, don't worry about that. No, don't worry about not being known in Hackney. If you're not in Hackney now, it's, it's moist. It's gentrified. Man's not from Hackney, no? Don't you have a prayer? 20 years ago I was on Hackney <laughs> it's not, not, being, being known in Hackney now is nothing it needs to be known in Barking now <laughs> bro. or Dagenham Dagenham I mean bro I mean I, I get but I know it. what you're saying in terms of um, you know I but like what I was saying in terms of the only reason why I guess you feel that validation is because you didn't grow up in a black community like that you didn't grow up in an ends. You didn't grow up in Peck now more. Well, Brixton's or the Hackney's. Thornhill Thorn was kind of like that at the time, but like I wasn't involved. Right. That's the thing. Like I, I went to school in Shirley, right. so I would get on right. a bus to go to right. where my private school was, right. and I'd come back. So the only time I'm seeing so dudes on the ends is when they was rubbing me when on the way back. Like it wasn't a case of- You got rubbed on the way back? I got that. So, uh, so one person tried to rub me one time, and I got pickpocketed to the second time, but it was supposed to be a slight joke because we keep moving. Um, but yeah, like so it, you throw you throw rubbery on black people. No, as in like the joke was Thornton Heath was bad like that back in those days, but I wasn't really out here on the okay, streets okay. like that. So the idea was that for me, it's not that I want like guys that rob people to love me. It's not that I want you know the I, I want criminal approval. I want street credibility in that way, but it's. I think there's an element to which when you feel like a greater sense of family has embraced you. And if you've got 
let's say for let's say for example it wasn't even based on race or area let's say it was like your university your alma mater or something like that if let's say every time you succeed in something like twenty thousand people who go to your uni or like that's our guy he's an alum blah blah blah, blah. it gives you that sense of like there's a family behind no me one does that on ends though pardon no one does that on ends unless you're famous if yeah. you're famous tomorrow, Brixton will claim you. Although you surpassed through Brixton, don't argue me, blood. <laughs> Might just see him in the mallies. Don't argue me, blood. <laughs> but 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 that's my point though. Is like even when they get famous, they still need some validation from a group. Like they can have all the fans. They can have people but out in Sweden. Valid. They can have niggas like yeah, in, in, yeah, in, in, yeah. in China because going you go want, Michael. But you because want because you know it's like you want Gary and in the Indiana shouting you know for you. You know what? It's like. It's like if I become a successful, a successful comedian. It's like when cases say, if you're a black comedian, you can't perform in front of a black audience. There's a problem there. Okay, if you're a, if you're a black comedian who can't perform, in yeah, front you of find black. it uncomfortable performing in a black audience. Then yeah. there's an issue here. Yeah, you understand. Yeah, and I think that's what it is. Okay, like I don't need to be big in Nigeria. I really don't. Mm. I don't. However, I can. I would have, but I do know if I go to like when I went to Germany, and it's all Africans. Mm. Is it? Is it? Did I? Did, was there a different attitude towards that show? Yes, because it was the first time I'm in Germany. Well, second time, but it's all Africans. Yeah, and they're all here to see what I have to say, mm-hmm. which presents so a different to hear from right. Speak. Which presents a different experience to going to a ninety nine on the night and stuff like that. Yes, because I've done that repeatedly. Yes, you understand. Whereas this one, I knew I could be a bit more of myself. This is what I'm talking no, about. No, but though. what I mean, you said the feeling of smashing it. Yeah. The approach is different. The okay. feeling is the same. Okay. Because I've done watches when I've smashed it. It's like, man, I love what I do. Yeah, I was yeah. in Dover. 10, 10, 15 people in the room. Okay. Right? And I was in Dover, blood. Bro. Bro. I, mean, I, I, I was one of those I was saying to myself. That's about as white as it gets. Those, that in Dover. It was bro. in a jazz club. A former jazz. Yeah, that's about as white as it gets. Right. Even the cliffs are white, yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was a jazz club. And um, I just wanted to gig. I was back in gig mode. I wasn't sure if I was going to have any gigs that day. And I thought, let me not be arrogant and say, I don't need Dover. Yeah. I get there and it's like 10, 15 people. Right? Okay. So we're back to old school comedy days. Yeah. You know, where everybody can hear your words. Yeah. But bro, yeah. there is no He's feeling, no feeling better than getting that small room to laugh. No feeling better. Because you know what, Ola? You know they heard you. Mm. And you know they laughed on purpose. Mm. That 20,000, 30,000 room... All of them can be like, I'm just laughing because everyone else is laughing. I've seen a show like that where there's enough people laughing, you don't realize how many people are not. <laughs> I mean, I say not laughing, I'm just like this. I've been in shows like this, like that. <laughs> and you're just like, you like, yeah, TED Talk, bro. <laughs> right, it's just like, hmm. Mm. The show at the Camden, that, that was, a, do, you know how the, do you know why the show at Camden was amazing? Why? God, I told you, it? God bless Nathan Cassidy, man. God bless him, man. Oh, he had yeah, a yeah. tough start. The mic was making an echoey sound and the woman who was supposed to do the sound wasn't there. So he had to come up and do it again. He didn't get to warm up the way he wanted to, you know? Yeah. Brings on the first act. She does well. And it's my turn. And there's still that kind of audience. Yeah. You know, that audience where it's like, ha ha, stop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No momentum. No momentum. No momentum laughs going. Yeah. And so I knew, being an experienced pro that I am, <laughs> I knew you do not force feed this audience yeah you gotta finger them this this brother i do yeah. apologize to the listeners but this is what we do baby you've got to you know how <sighs> you just can't just and i'm talking you know when you bring a girl back and most guys want to go straight for the main zone you're like bro man you ain't, you ain't trying to neck here <laughs> hey. you know show us something with the shoulder blades like damn yeah my shoulder blades moving you know damn, it was me. that kind of day i know for me was a killer like that right so i was just like this you know what I'm going to hit them slow, bruv. Hey, don't say slow like that. <laughs> don't be in the room with me talking about slow. I said, I'm going to hit them slow. <laughs> hey, Ola, started with material. I spoke even slower on purpose. Okay. Because I really wanted them to strain to listen. Okay, then let's start leaning <laughs> forward. Like, you know, you know you're winning. when You know, you know the guys that might have been chatting before? Yeah. And then now they're chatting. Shh. <laughs> They don't want to talk no more. Yeah. Don't be, I don't want to talk no more. This guy is funny and I want to hear everything he has to say. Yeah, That's when yeah, you know yeah. you're in the zone. When I knew I had them, you know when you know you have them, you could say whatever you want. 
I even broke off script. I said, y'all, 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 y'all working later on? <laughs> 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 and when I finished it, yeah, it was so rewarding that I'm at that point in my career where doing a show is not about it's necessarily smashing it. Mm. Dealing with the challenges that come with a maybe not so responsive audience yeah. don't phase me as much no more. But you sound like you married to stand up. I am, like, man. Now it's like you know we ain't gonna have sex, period. But we gonna get this intimacy, oh, you know. But what you saying? know what? It's, it's, and whisper a little something in your ear. Yeah. Slow. Do you know what? And also, don't you do that with your material sometimes? Like I was, I came out. I was like, man, I am dogging this audience right now. Bro, I'm married in real life. Every time I go out to gig, I'm smashing, bro. Mm. I am smashing. Because you ain't smashing. coming home to smash. <laughs> this, buddy. This, buddy. Why is all that game smashing this? I'll tell you that much. <laughs> bro, just because you said that, I am smashing like, hella hard loud, tonight. Loud, That's loud, right. Loud me, My wife's going to get the full brunt of what you just started. Just After now. that, I'm like, you just put I'm in. A, you sure you got the energy. Bro, that, the Amalaz was going to pound me, bro. What okay. do you mean? All right. That's complex carbs in there. What do you mean, brother? That's going to be slow release energy. Why do, slow. Why do men do this? You know? Oh, okay, watch. I'm about to kill the wife tonight. You, nah. don't, you don't have to do that, bro. Nah, I'm going to validate remember myself. You, in- remember when I said to you during <laughs> pandemic, I saw my boy in the insane breeze. I said, you know, it's been kind of tough because I can't perform. It's my, it's, oh, that's your struggle, man. I'm I'm performing quite well. <laughs> But I went into defense mode. Oh, I, I didn't mean that performance. Oh, I stay, I stay on top. <laughs> Remember I said to you on um, on um, Insta, and I was like, my dick's so hard, it's in jail right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you don't need to tell all of that, bro. I know, I know. It's not it's that funny, necessary, bro. but we go all out. It all out, bro. The moment you challenge, you can't make a joke about me not getting any. Imagine. Bro. In the Sainsbury's. Next, next time I get some, bro. I start pulling out phone she numbers. Like, Why you so rough? Do you know Sarah? Do you know Sarah? You don't know her. Oh, oh. Sarah. <laughs> you knew Sarah. You knew about me. <laughs> and the thing is, you're not getting no real props here. Yeah, bro. It's a shame, bro. It's, it's a just shame. that bravado and that ego. It's a shame, man. That ego really be ruling you, bro. It really be ruling you. Yeah. Yeah, man. Hey, listen. What time is it? 7.51. We need to... Yeah, man. All right, man. We can wrap this up. Oh, no. I want to wrap up organically, time. not just, you know. This, we even do a two-part call. You, know, two you, p- you picked up your whole phone and just called out the time it. and be like, yeah, I want to wrap this up A6 organically. Two. Organically in the sense where the two-part call. We had a two-part call today. Yeah, yeah. But haven't. I'm not actually calling two-part today. I'm calling someone that was on the track of two-part. <laughs> but two-part did harmonize the line in the background. Because he'd be doing that sometimes. <laughs> And it's off the song called Crazy, which we probably called like hey, seven bro, lines. Bro, this one song, song brother. But it's the best line. Brother. It's the best line. And I feel like it applies to everyone. And he says, a million things run through my mind. It's by Badass, who's dead, by the way. So rest in peace to Badass. Badass. He was a member of the LBC crew. One of okay. people. And like Tupac was a general, just the kind of person he was, he would put anybody on the album. Yeah. Can you really, imagine? He, you, he really you, put anybody you, got, you, on know, you, you ain't even rap match fit yet. Bro. You want to be on my track? Mm-hmm. Yeah, they, mm-hmm. <laughs> and there's still a. Uh, my guy used to tell me that his brother, my guy was a rapper. His brother basically used to refer to all of his rapper friends as the outlaws. Because he was like, he obviously believes that, like, you, my bro, you can rap, but all your friends that rap with you, bruv, bruv, these are just a bunch of outlaws, man. <laughs> these, these guys ain't got no talent. They're just affiliated, bruv. Yeah, it's so funny it's, because I think the only outlaw that could, two of them, Hussein and Gaddafi. But the rest were street kids. <laughs> Actually, his cousin was quite good. Tupac's cousin was on there. Which one was Tupac's cousin? Kano. K- um, but he died, K- didn't he? Castro. No, okay. Gaddafi died. Okay. Gaddafi's meant when, to be... When they kill my nigga, Kano. That's a different guy. That's a different Kano. Yeah. This one is... um. So his cousin was... Outlaws, what's his cousin's so name? So it's Castro. 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 Okay. K- oh, because they, they all had like... Outlaw names, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, K. Castro. They weren't even really outlaws. They were all like enemies dictators of America. and yeah. yeah. They're basically enemies of America. So okay. they're seen as outlaws, in it? Was Machiavelli an enemy of America? Bro, anyway, let's look at it. could sell anything, innit? <laughs> no, of, course, of course, but I like the fact that they all had their little, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Gaddafi yeah, and yeah, Castro. Yeah, yeah. And but that's what when I tell people, say, when people say, oh, Tupac was a thug, I was like, bro, he's the only person that had a flipping Italian prophet as an alias. <laughs> Everyone else was a drug dealer or mafia mo- mo- um, mogul. Yeah, you know I he's mean, the only one that came with Nicola Machiavelli. Everyone else was, you know, yeah. and then Nas, I guess Nas Nostradamus, but yeah, you know, Biggie was Frank White. Yeah, was the king of New York. Yeah, corrupt was corrupt the kingpin. Yeah, um, Memphis Bleak and all them cats there. Freeway Rick Ross. Jay Z gave himself a god name though. 
Jay Hova. Jay Hova. What other aliases is Jay Z got as? Jay. Jigger. Jigger. Okay. Yeah. He never really gave himself a. He gave himself a god one. The, yeah. Yeah. Everyone else, but, but I mean, he was Jay Hova, the god MC. Like that was his his thing. So like, I didn't like Jay Hova as a name. I, I didn't think it rolled well. I just think we allowed it because it's Jay. Yeah, of course. I reckon if someone, if a new MC came in, my name's Jay Hova. Get the fuck out of here with a name <laughs> like that. <laughs> you know. But do what? Do you want? Funny enough, Hove works. Hove. My name is Hove. Ho, H yeah. to the OV. Yeah. That that flow was mad though. Yeah, yeah, that, that flow was that mad works. though. That works. That you know, works. what's it's slightly like low key blasphemous, but like you know, Hove. Flat. I let Hove like. I let Hove like. I was in blasphemous. My name what, was Hove. to say J Hova. The J Hova part was blasphemous, but to shorten it to Hove, I was like, oh, like, the J Hova part was definitely yeah, blasphemous. Yeah, yeah. But um, my name is Hove. H to the OV. Yeah, that part. I that flat. Like, you know what? Yeah, I checked Cheddar. Like. When he said I checked Cheddar like the food inspector, I said. <laughs> <laughs> Yo. What? The best line in that film was flying in a piece of paper bearing my name. I got, I got the, the hottest, hottest chick, chick in the game wearing my chain. chain. You know what, yeah? As a young listener, that's when you should just turn off the, the song. I don't like this guy. Bro, and you know what was mad about winning. that video? He didn't even show Beyonce properly. What the but... There was no video. It's, it's a car way. It's in the middle of a song. He that, just cuts to it. That's what I'm saying. Got and to, he, he, off he's now. got Beyonce in there. And you just see like from a, you know it's Beyonce where oh, it is. Oh, you know I need to shit. watch it again. I've never seen it. Bro, like that. this is the flash, and it's like you put Beyonce in your video, didn't even really put her in. You know why though? Just give her a flash, man. This you know why a, though? Why? Label appearance fees. Them things are mad. You really? You think, hell yes. You think if you're dating a girl, hell the label's yes. like hell yes. <laughs> hell yes. Nuts. Hell yes. Can you they imagine have you have to eat. pay the label to it's put the, your girlfriend in the image. video? It's her brand. It's that she's a brand. Mad. It's like me just saying I'm gonna put coke in my thing and think I'm gonna get away with it. No, no, but you're not dating coke though. What but I'm saying, it doesn't like, matter. I'm putting coke in my thing. How, what if the label say they they want fees to Pamela in the bedroom, bro? You can't you can't pay yeah, that. But, like, you, 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 but you do realize Beyonce is a mogul brand. Of but, course, Jay Z can't just be flinging in his in his hip hop video. They have to get clearance for that. But all of these rappers that have people just show up, you know, the guy that shows up right at the end that he's just yeah, who you is have he? like one other rapper and he's like, who is he? I told you, did he bro, charge one twelve? Showed up in like. SAS videos, bro. You think that was free? Day. I don't think. Uh, well, I don't know. Like, I, mean, <laughs> I told maybe. you. Can't, I told you. Did he charge? Can you showed up in Debanji's video? You think that was free? Twist? Okay, but he was managing. You, you, think, that was free? At that point. you think that was free? I told you. Um, did he charge one twelve yeah, twenty did, grand for did, being in that video? Did did he's different? Though. No, but you know why? But it makes sense though, Allah. You're gonna make money. This video's gonna sell. I'm Diddy. You don't just get me in your video. I don't care if I'm signed to you. So if you're signed to if me. You, if you're dating a girl and she gets paid to like make, I don't know, like she makes Instagram sketches or whatever. That's not enough. Would you, would you charge her? To do what? To show up in her Instagram sketch. Like yes. Your business, baby. Oh, yes. For your girlfriend. Yes. Hey, if she makes Instagram. Ladies. By the way, that's the, that's, we're both in the creative industry. Yeah. I can't write a film for my girlfriend because she's an actor say you're going to do it for free. Mad. Guy Ritchie was dating Madonna. They were like, oh, you used her song in the movie. Yeah, you know how much I have to pay for that. It's not. You give yeah, it them at that point. Using music, I understand. That, like, but you just want me to. You. you want me to make a sketch. You, she wants me to be in her sketches. Yeah, and she wants me to do it for free. Yeah, she's nah. You guys are together. Nah, nah. Not if she's a success, successful. If we're on the come up, different. But if she's making millions off of it, she's not. I'm not doing it for free. You getting dick for free? <laughs> this dick, <laughs> dick is free. Free? Hell no. That's not how you do. That's not how it works. That's not the how quote, it works. The quote. What did Badass say? Um, he said, a million things run through my mind. In, and I find you don't have to be in jail to be doing time. And Tupac comes back, you don't have to be in jail to be doing time. But I think Tupac was like, damn, I didn't write that shit. Because <laughs> one of the most potent lines on the song, you don't have to yeah. be in jail to be doing time. And I feel like if we all if we all deep it, yeah, we're all doing time. Man. And time's a motherfucker. Every day we're doing time. The moment you wake up, it's like shit. Bro. Today I was panicking mm. because I had to go and get a Hoover, do so many things. I was thinking, I gotta get to Olas by 5 30. Mm. So I was already panicking, like, man, where's all there's not enough time. And that's when he, that, that, that's, that's why that line was so important. It's like, you don't actually have to be in jail to be doing time. And there's a lot of us doing time in this world. We're just literally going through the motions. And so that's it's important to be say. mindful of um like you said, being content, you know, be mindful of the things that are achievable in this life. So you're not just doing time, you know, instant millionaire and all that. You're going to be doing a lot of time, baby. Yeah. You I mean, and, and, yo, I think even the, the other side of it is the fact that a lot of people are even really imprisoned in their mind as to what they can do. So yeah. they, they put the, the jail bars on themselves. Yeah. 
So you tell them, you know, you can work hard and you could, you know, provide and, mm. you know, take on a family or whatever it is like that you're aiming for. And they're like, nah, man, you know, I can't do that. You know where I'm coming from. You know what I've been through and whatever it is. And, you know, that part as well, that part depresses me because, it, you know, it makes me really wonder how many times have I, you know, even for people who really need it, but even for myself, how many times have I stopped myself from doing something because I put the jail bars up? You know, like when I came into the game of comedy, I was fearless, bro. I, w I was like ready to do whatever. You ask me now, now I'm way more concerned about all these other things. Some of them good, you know, some of them probably just useless concerns. No, you gotta, you gotta, you got to, you're right, man. You got to shake. I mean, there is, you were fearless when you came in, but like everybody, you know, that youthful exuberance gets, that experience gets in the way. And it's not necessarily yeah. people tell you to be. I was not this cynical when I was in my 20s. Yeah. I was not this, you know, cautious of everything. Someone says good morning to me and I look outside. Is it really morning? Is it really morning? Is it good? Like the, the, the you know, the funny thing, the industry took away the love of comedy for me. Mm. So people ask me, you know, one girl says, oh, she, you got Shelton, oh, are you excited? Yeah, not really. She's like, I, I can yeah. you not be excited? And I was like, because I did four last week. I did four just the other day. Back to back. All right, relax, brother. But she didn't understand <laughs> that I'm going to work. Yeah. But she said, yeah, but I thought you, you know, you love, but you, you, you love what you do. I said, I do love what I do, but um, it doesn't take away the fact that it's still work. And the industry, working comedy and performing are two different things. Yeah. The work of comedy is hard. It's depressing. It's struggle. It's, it's stressful. Yeah. Performing is bliss because you're, you're working that night, mm. you know? So, uh, you know, but people, it's so funny because I remember I was telling someone to pitch a sitcom about the urban comedy scene. Yeah. they're like no one cares about sitcoms so they said to me so wow. I said okay then that's it then but wow. if people actually took an interest into how we get to being on the stage yeah, there would be a different concern for comics of course of, of course people care people do care that person was just trying they probably got a brief and they're trying to get you to fit into their brief right pause but, but I don't that, know any comedy shows sitcoms you don't know any sitcoms because that's what she said. No, that's what she said. No one cares about comedy sitcoms. Okay, so when she say no one, she's saying producers. Yeah, and industry, yeah, and industry. they've tried, and yeah. it's not worked, kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. people love watching sitcoms. People talk about their favorite sitcoms till today. You know, but it's not centered around comedy, on. though. So a sitcom centered around comedy. Oh, bro, Seinfeld is the highest grossing sitcom of all time. But it's not centered around the stand up, is it? It is. Yeah, really. it's him doing stand up and <sighs> just basically living life with his. Flatmates in between. But is he is he as a stand is he a stand up in the show? He's a stand up. I didn't know that. Yeah, and because I've seen the stand up, I didn't know he was a stand up though. Yeah, yeah, he's a stand up in the show. Louis C.K.'s done it as a stand up in the show. Jim Jeffries has done it as a stand up in the show. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like people have had a chance to do it, but you know, sometimes they'll change it slightly. So like he's a writer or whatever it is, but like the, these ones, they got to be stand ups and do a whole sitcom about being a stand up and blah blah blah. blah. It's just, it's only when it comes to us that we're, no, like, nobody cares. <laughs> no one's interested. <laughs> nobody cares, bro. No one cares about black people doing stand-up. I mean, you could say that maybe some people have seen it too much, but come on, man. The highest grossing sitcom of all time <laughs> is about a stand-up comedian. You know, at the end of the day, anything you tell me after that, I, I don't really believe you. And, and that's with all the family sitcoms that we have out. That's never my... And all the workplace sitcoms we have out. That's not even my... It's just, it's the Eddie Murphy story. You know, I think we said it last week. Which one was that? When one? he met Rodney Dangerfield for the first time, and he was like, you know, I, I would love you to see my act. Yeah. And he sees his act and says, "You a bit, bit dirty. I don't think that's gonna fly." Yeah. He sees Eddie Murphy a year later and sees his palace and says, "Hey, who knew? Who knew?" And Eddie Murphy, because they ask him, "What advice would you give him?" Don't listen to anybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you imagine you go up to Eddie Murphy? What advice would you give me? Don't listen to anyone. Uh, he's right. You be like this. Yeah, but whatever, you just because <laughs> you want him to tell you something. Yeah, but yeah, he's actually yeah. telling you the truth. Don't listen to anyone. What well, he's telling you is, I don't fucking know. I don't yeah. know. And and Bill Cosby was telling him off. Uh, yeah, you know he had a bunch of people telling him off, and yeah. he's still you know regarded now as one of the greats. And it's like, and the know, second one I use is the rules. when Marvin Gaye wrote "What's Going On." Barry Gordy said it's not going to be a hit, and he shelved it. That's Barry Gordy as well. Barry Gordy. He was the hit maker, but he, he was not wrong. He'd never seen a song like that. And Ain't yeah. No Mountain, what's wrong with Ain't No Mountain High? You know, are you, are you happy? You know, yeah, I'm saying, I there's some get, clouds, do yeah. some cloud shit. You ain't got no four people behind you. Yeah, <laughs> like, you know, you ain't got no songs about the lilies and the daisies. He's like, no, I want to talk about what's going on. 
And if he didn't stick to his guns, that, that's oh, almost like God. I said up in Yeah, I know, right? So I want to talk about what's going on. But if he didn't stick to his guns, if he didn't believe in that song and yeah. say that this is what's needed, we sing that song till today. I mean, it, 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 it's a very unconventional song. I don't know many songs that sound like that song. Well, not for that time anyway. I mean, yeah. So it's... You know? So, I mean, yeah, it does require some people to be fearless, you know, and, and to, to kind of push through when you really believe in what it you're It requires doing. for you to take that, to not be afraid to fail. Mm. you got to embrace the idea that you might fail. you got to yeah. go on there and say, I might make this song and nobody will give a shit about it. Yeah. But but this song is important for me to make. And just believe in that, man. The rest is irrelevant. People will tell you everything. People will tell you after the finished product. You know, you could have put a scene in that. Da, 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 da. Yeah, I could have, but I didn't. Mm. Can you imagine me going to tell The Godfather or Friday? You know, there could have been the scene where Craig, you know, did it. Yeah, okay. Right. What film have you made? Cool. Cool. <laughs> Thumbs up on that one. Yeah. And another thing I learned was you make people make one. And wants you to watch that one. Yeah. It's like, bro, it's just one. Like my friend, her her her, her niece wrote a spoken word poem. Mm. She played it from me, What do you think? I said, it doesn't matter what I think. It's just one spoken word poem. She needs to do 150 of these for me to even consider that she's even doing it. Because this is not going to be her last one. It'd be unfair for me to give any opinion on the first piece she's ever done. Let her grow. It doesn't matter what I think. She has to keep going. That's the only thing. Mm. and that's the advice you have to give to a person who's coming up it doesn't matter about that one and that you know you know what that is that's at the root of that advice is to just keep going absolutely because and, and this is something that i've realized whether you're talking about successful entrepreneurs who are, I, I listen to successful entrepreneur stories and i also listen to a lot of marriage content and funnily enough the one thread that i can see through both of those and also the creative journey is that when you ask successful people what the secret to their success is, there's usually some variation of, I didn't give up. Mm -hmm. I kept going. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, if it's an entrepreneur, they've been through a bunch of mm -hmm. stories. Mm -hmm. If it's a married couple, it's like, we went through tough times where it was so much easier for us to just call it quits and divorce and we and chose to And now we made going. it the other side. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, even as a comedian, you, you look back at some of the stories of the people that were like, oh, these people are greats. But if you look at, like, their real story, you see many moments where they should have just given up and just 100%. been like, it's all over. So there's an element to which not giving up is really kind of the key to success. It's like, you just have to keep going. Mm -hmm. uh, and on that, that note, commitment. I think we should wrap this up. And yeah, yeah, we should. <laughs> we should quit right now. <laughs> we should wrap this up. Don't give up, y'all. <laughs> and we should quit right now. But yeah, that's 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 the, that's the the that was the essence behind that. Um, you don't have to be in jail to be doing time. It's just kind of not let you, not let that pass, not let the world pass you by. Mm. and just don't give up I like that bro I like that where can the people find you um, the same place you could have found me last week I enjoy your answer. I haven't posted question. I haven't posted in God knows how long however it's my birthday on Thursday I'm getting my hair did tomorrow it's your birthday on Thursday yeah that's what it does yeah man I'm doing the store you should come down man what are you doing on, on Thursday you doing anything oh I can't actually it's my birthday it's your birthday on Thursday yeah G wow that's crazy we did say birthday <laughs> Yo, it's BQ Day on Thursday, the 5th of August. That's the boys' quarters birthday. Podcast and um, Yeah. I mean, should we drop this one on the birthday? Or Are you working on Thursday? Um, No. Uh, my wife has planned my day. Okay. Yeah, so I'm not sure exactly what I'm doing. It's all a surprise. Okay. Well, that's fine then. Yeah, so um, so guys, if you don't know at this point, figure that out. We have the same birthday. That's why I call it BQ Day. Um, so yeah, shout us, you know, hit us up on the socials, say happy birthday on Thursday. Send cake. Um, send cake, send money, send nudes, um, at Ola the Comedian on yeah, a Send thing. nudes to at Ola the Comedian, <laughs> not me. <laughs> uh, that was too, that flowed too well. Send news at Ola the Comedian. You need to, no, no I was just, okay, don't worry about it. <laughs> All right, so it's at Fumbi on Mataya on uh, Instagram, at Fumbi on Twitter, at Ola the Comedian on everything. That's on Neighborhood. That's on Crip, yo. And uh, guys, stay blessed. Catch you after. Peace.